Um, this is to check on our online participants. Our online participants are checking on you if you can hear us. Goski Alabi. Professor Goski Alabi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Professor Goski Alabi. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, pretty. That's great. Thank you very much. Glad that you can hear us. Uh, welcome on board. Uh, can I check on uh, Professor Olufemi Peters? Are you, can you hear us, sir? Yes, ma. Good morning. I can hear you clearly. Uh, great. Thank you very much for joining us online. We're just about to get started. And I'm glad you can follow us online. Oh, dear participants, please be upstanding as we welcome our executives, our vice chancellor, walking in now with our guests for this workshop, together with Mr. Chris Maiyaki. You're welcome to this TOT workshop. Karibuni Sana, you're welcome, sir. As they take their position in the podium, we remain standing. So we remain standing in readiness for the anthems, the Kenya National Anthem and the East African Anthem. Technical team, please. <laughs> East African Anthem. <laughs> And now we remain standing for prayers by Father Bonfas Kariuki from the Catholic Community Chaplain here of Kenyatta University and Sheikh Abdullahi Bundid, the Imam Kenyatta University. We read from Proverbs chapter 15, chapter 18 and verse 15, and we read, An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God our Father, we thank you for this new day and the gift of our Kenyatta University and all the friends and the guests here present. We are grateful, Father, for making it possible that through innovations and wisdom that comes from you alone, knowledge and skills can be imparted even to those far away from us. We pray that all of us involved in this workshop may strive for the con continuity of distant learning and enduring on quality. May this workshop strengthen and open new ways of ensuring quality. We thank you and we bless you for the organizers and all stakeholders, and especially our leaders, the president of this, this occasion and the vice president and the secretary of this occasion, our vice uh, chancellor, Professor Wainaina, and all the leadership and the secretariat. 
we pray for a fruitful workshop. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue praying. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious, Ya Allah. Praise be to Him, our Lord, the Lord of the universe. Glory is to you, O Allah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. We seek your forgiveness and repent to you. He whom you guide, no one can misguide. Ya Rabb, may you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers and gathering so that they will be able to impart effectively their God-given knowledge to everyone in this gathering. May everyone be blessed as they continue to bring their expertise to other people who are eagerly awaiting. Bless the participants as well so that they will be able to glean the vital information from this activity. Wa'akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Yes, as we settle down, uh, readiness for this occasion. Professor Goski Alabi joining us online. That's the President, African Council for Distance Education and Consulting, President Lawe Open University College in Ghana. Professor Paul Wainaina, the Secretary General, African Council for Distance Education, and our Vice Chancellor, Kenyatta University. Mr. Chris Waiyaki, Mayaki, Deputy Executive Secretary, Nigeria Universities Commission. Professor Olufemi Peters joining us online, the first Vice President, African Council for Distance Education, and Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. Our DVCs and members of management present, Dr. Teresa Moma the Executive Director, African Council for Distance Education, the facilitators of this TOT workshop, participants, staff, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning once again. Please take a moment to welcome your neighbor to this TOT and do it in Kiswahili. everybody great good morning everyone um, thank you very everybody. much can we hear uh, our online participant also welcome us uh, please good morning everyone good, good morning mo good morning thank you very much our chief guest it's now my pleasure to invite dr teresa moma the executive director african council for distance education to take us through a moment of introductions. You're welcome, Dr. Thank you so much, uh, Master of Ceremony. Your Excellency, the African Council for Distance Education President and the Consulting President, Lawe Open University College, Professor Goski Alabi the ACD Secretary General and the Vice Chancellor Kenyatta University, Professor Paul K. Wainaina, the ACD First Vice President and the Vice Chancellor National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufemi Peters, the ACD Board Members who are joining us virtually, the Deputy Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Nigeria, Mr. Chris Mayaki, the representatives of higher education commissions present, and those who are joining us virtually, the facilitators of this workshop, all participants 
both virtually and physically, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure and honor to take this opportunity to welcome you all to the African Council for Distance Education Headquarters, Nairobi, where we are hosted by Kenyatta University. I know it is possible that this could be the very first time for some of you to come to Kenya, but I'm also aware that even for all those that are familiar with ACD, this is the very first time to meet physically after the ACD secretariat was moved from Egerton University to Kenyatta University and after the COVID lockdowns. I say Karibu Sana. Your Excellency, Madam President, allow me to take this opportunity to let you know that in this workshop, we have four regulators for higher education participating both virtually and physically, drawn from four countries, namely National Universities Commission uh, Nigeria, Commission for University Education Kenya, Commission for Higher Education Mauritius, and Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. They will be speaking later today to share with participants some of the measures they have put in place to enhance quality assurance in delivery of education in higher institutions of learning through Odell. I also want to let you know that we have 30 participants drawn from 15 institutions of higher um, learning institutions from seven countries. I am aware some participants missed out flights and might not be able to join us today, while others are on their way because they arrived late. The countries where the participants are drawn from include Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya, Ghana, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Mauritius. The, 50, the institutions that are represented here include National, National Open University of Nigeria, University of Lagos, National Teachers Institute, Kaduna, Nigeria, University of Risungo, University of Alipata, that is UNICED, Masinde Murilo University of Science and Technology, Egerton University, Kenyatta University, Daystar University, Kipabi University, Machakos University, KCA University, and African Nazarene University. Can I see all those that have come from those universities here? Very good, I know some are on the way. To note, Madam President, five of these institutions are not ACD members, but they are keen to be part of this great movement of ensuring there is quality in open and distance learning. In a special way, I welcome all of you to register as ACD members, both as individuals and also as institutions. I also encourage those of you participants who are here from our member institutions to register as individual members. We can have a discussion on this on how best it will happen, but also more information is in our website. Madam President, additionally, we have four facilitators drawn from four different institutions who will facilitate the workshop in the next three days. They include Professor Christine Ofulwe from National Open University, Nigeria, who is also the Director, ACD Quality Assurance and Accreditation Agency. Uh, who is the host of this workshop uh, and she's going to be a co-facilitator. We also have Dr. Ephraim Mwaranga from Zaide, 
who is the lead facilitator. We have Dr. Elena Jones from UNESA, who is the core facilitator, and Mr. Eric Andaria from Kenya. Father, Madam President, I'm glad to let you know that a number of ACD members and friends are following this opening proceedings virtually through YouTube, Facebook, and through Zoom, courtesy of Kenyatta University, ICT Directorate, who have made this to happen. And I must say thank you so much to the Vice Chancellor, Kenyatta University. I believe we are going to have exciting three days of interact, interacting with each other, but also learning and sharing on how best we can use the ACD Quality Assurance Toolkit to enhance quality in ODEL in our institutions. With those many remarks, it is now my singular honor to invite the ACD First Vice President and Vice Chancellor National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufem Peters, to give his remarks. Thank you. The African Council for Distance Education, our president, Professor Goski Alabi, the Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University, Professor Paul K. Wainana, and also the General Secretary of the ACDE. The other executive members of ACDE who are either present or are watching through the Zoom. The Executive Director of ACD, Dr. Teresa Woma, who I must commend for her tenacity and initiative. The executive secretaries and their representations, and especially our own from Nigeria, a friend, who is also my regulator, Mr. Chris Meyaki, the director of ACD QAA, Dr. Professor Christine Ofulwe from my university, the management of Kenyatta University, the workshop resource persons, ably led by the lead facilitator, Dr. Ephraim Milanga of Saidi, South Africa, the participants, both physical and online, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am very envious of not being at that uh, place and I can see how colorful it is already. I wish I could just get into a plane and land myself at, uh, at Nairobi. So it is with great pleasure that I welcome everyone to this train the trainer workshop and the review of the ACD QA toolkit, which is taking place at the Kenyatta University, Nairobi. My apologies for not being there. We actually just finished our 12th convocation on Saturday. And that's the reason why I am not there. The ACD QA toolkit is of course the brainchild of the ACD accreditation agency that was established in 2008 after the establishment of the ACD itself in 2004. And we at the National Open University of Nigeria were ever thankful to the ACD for situating the quality agency in our institution since then. This in itself makes us conscious of our responsibilities on matters of quality of education delivery service to our own stakeholders at home, but also to the continental global body. I am glad to note that the ACD QAA, which was one of the initial two programs identified, has grown to become one of ACD's most critical program initiatives. The agency was responsible for the development and contextualization of the ACD toolkit as a means of promoting quality in ODL provisions by developing and implementing mechanisms for a continental quality assurance framework. 
Since the development of this toolkit, the agency has held several regional and institutional training workshops on the use of the toolkit for self-assessment of institutions and programs. And I've been well informed that this workshop, in addition to being the masterclass on how to use the toolkit, to also be the first in the series of workshops that will focus on the review of the toolkit. This is informed by the developments in higher education generally, arising from, but not limited to, the increasing use of technology for teaching and learning, and the changing competency and skills that is now required for the 21st century workplace. In 2022, my university played host to the president of ACDE, and the executive director of ACDE in Nigeria for a facilitated visit to our regulatory body, the National University Commission, where the ACDU Q3A toolkit was presented. I am glad to note that the NUC is ably represented here by the Deputy Executive Secretary in charge of administration, Mr. Chris Meyaki, and I hope that closer ties will be forged between the ACDE, the NUC, and indeed other national regulatory bodies towards enhancing quality assurance in ODL on the continent. I wish to commend our president, Professor Goski Alabi, for her leadership role in this initiative. And I thank the Secretary General, ACDE, and the Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University, Professor Paul K. Wainana, for accepting to host this workshop at this particular moment in this university. I congratulate the ACD Executive Director and her team, and also the ACD QA Director, Professor Ofule, for their collective efforts in organizing this all important workshop. We are ever thankful to Dr. Ephraim Bilanga who is ever willing to offer his service to us and to the other facilitators for their commitment to the vision and for accepting to facilitate this workshop. On our part, the National Open University of Nigeria will continue to support the agency as our contribution to achieving the mandate and vision of the continental body and the sponsorship of, our, of two of our senior staff and the director of ACD to this workshop is indicative of the premium we at the National Open University of Nigeria place on this body and the ACD itself. Mr. President, and Mr. Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University, in concluding, it is my hope that the efforts that the two of you have put into organizing this workshop, that those trained will play a critical role in the self-assessment and self-evaluation process of their various institutions, and therefore strengthen the quality of ODL provisions on our continent. I want to encourage you, the participants, to take advantage of this workshop to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills and go back and use the toolkit for safety assessment. I wish you a very successful workshop and fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Let us give them a better clap, please. Thank you, Dr. Moma and uh, Professor Olufemi Peters uh, for the introduction and remarks respectively. I wish to acknowledge Benue State University in Nigeria that are also here with us for this TOT. Madam President, now my pleasure to invite Mr. Chris Maiyaki, the Deputy Executive Secretary, Nigeria Universities Commission, to give remarks on quality measures by National Universities Commission of Nigeria. Let's appreciate him as he takes to the podium. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, Madam Moderator, uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging our dear President, uh, Professor Goski uh, Alabi, uh, the first Vice President, uh, our own Professor Olu Femi uh, Peters, and then our Chief Host, uh, Professor Paul K. Wei Naina, uh, Vice Chancellor and Secretary General of ACDE. Uh, Principal officers of this university, uh, Dr. Teresa Woma, uh, Executive Director, distinguished, invited guests, uh, university leaders, you know, colleagues drawn from the African continent, uh, and members of the Port Estep of the Realm, if they are here. Uh, I'd like to um, bring uh, the warm felicitations and the best wishes of the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, uh, Professor Abubakar Adumu Rashid, and those of the management and staff, as well as those of the 222 universities that make up uh, the Nigerian University space uh, today. Uh, I consider it a huge privilege and a great pleasure uh, to have been invited uh, to uh, make some few remarks on this occasion of the African Council for uh, Distance Education Quality Assurance Train the Trainers Workshop. Uh, it is pertinent, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, to acknowledge the significant progress uh, recorded on the African continent with regards to measures being put in place to uphold and guarantee the quality of programs uh, delivered through the open and distance learning mode. I appreciate the commitment of all stakeholders whose sacrifices in time and resources uh, over the years have brought us this far and who are again uh, gathered here uh, to brainstorm on how best to ensure quality delivery of higher education through the instrumentality of open distance and e-learning in our various countries uh, in Africa. Uh, I'd like to also congratulate the executive of the ACDE and the host institution for putting uh, this workshop of to, for putting together this workshop of significant and uh, historical uh, proportion. I note that this workshop is taking place at a time when the call for a reinvention of university education, and more so, uh, the pivotal role of ODL is getting louder and louder uh, by the day. It is also taking place at a time when the role of for when we are making a case for a re-examination of the role of policy, uh, the role of implementation and best practices of uh, ODL. I should remind participants gathered here that the university enterprise is about reputation. It's about reputational capital. You can have all the best buildings, uh, the best, uh, the, the funding that you require, but if you do not demonstrate consistently and in a sustainable fashion, reputational capital, you have no business uh, undertaking the university enterprise. I want to say that because the NUC uh, has the convenient power, uh, having to superintend 222 universities, we undertake uh, to leverage on our you know, convenient power to ensure that the, the toolkit that ACD has painstakingly, you know, put together over the years, we will uh, work in active commitment with ACDE to uh, domesticate, as it were, and to uh, ensure that our member institutions uh, give uh, quality using the toolkit, uh, the loudest expression. Uh, I, I, I was speaking to Dr. Teresa earlier, on, and I think the toolkit uh, is can be likened to the to, to, you know, to drive in a car without a dashboard. You know, you know what will happen to you. And so uh, it is actually with a deep sense of pride and fulfillment uh, that I congratulate each and every one of us that has made time to be here and the participants and the organizers. And I pray that we will have a very fulfilling, a very purposeful and productive outing today and during uh, the, in the days, in the critical days ahead of us. And I thank you once again. Uh, as we say in Kenya, uh, you know, Karibu, and thank you very much. Asante sana.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and let's appreciate uh, him once more for that. Thank you very much, sir. Madam President, it's now my pleasure to invite Dr. George Onyango, the Executive Dean, Digital School of Virtual and Open Learning of Kenyatta University, to invite our Vice Chancellor. And just before that, may I also recognize the presence of Laikipia University here, and Zitek Karibuni Sana, Dr. Onyango, please. Let's appreciate him as he takes to the podium. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to invite the Secretary General, African Council for Distance Education, uh, Professor Paul K. Wainaina, the Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University. And before he comes, uh, let me acknowledge one or two things about Professor Paul uh, K. Wainaina. Now, um, our Vice Chancellor has been very gracious and uh, very magnanimous in fostering um, distance education in the country. And this is clearly demonstrated by him giving space for the hosting of the African Council and Distance Education Secretariat at Kenyatta University. We really do appreciate that. And secondly, we also need to appreciate that behind the scenes, our professor has gone out of his way to ensure the success of this workshop. And this is mainly attributed to his passion to distance and education, distance education uh, in the country. And indeed, Kenyatta University has positioned itself in the region as a leader in open distance and e-learning because of the passion that the Vice Chancellor holds regarding technology-enabled open and distance education. So without further ado, let me welcome our Vice Chancellor, Professor K. Wanaina, to give his remarks. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Onyango. Um, let me start by acknowledging uh, some of the officials who are with us and also virtually. The ACDE president, uh, Professor Koski Alabi, who is also the consulting president, Lawe Open University College, uh, Ghana. The ACD uh, first vice president, my brother, Professor Rufebi uh, Peters, who is also the vice chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. The deputy executive secretary, National Universities Commission, of Nigeria, Mr. Chris Mayaki, professors from different universities, all the participants who are here, and also the trainers, and everybody else who have actually helped to make this workshop a uh, success. It is a great pleasure and honor to welcome you all to this quality assurance training uh, of trainers workshop. And by extension to Kenyatta University that is hosting the African Council for Distance Education Secretariat. First, allow me to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank the ACD uh, President, uh, Professor uh, Alambi, we really love you, very hardworking, for creating time to participate in this very important workshop that will enable us to uh, have the first cohort of the ACDE Quality Assurance Trainers. 
Second, I want to acknowledge and appreciate the first Vice President SED, uh, Professor Peters, for finding time to participate in this workshop. But more importantly, for the critical role his university is playing in hosting the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Agency, which has organized this workshop in collaboration with the ACDE Secretariat. Today, we are privileged and honored to have the Deputy Executive Secretary, National Universities uh, Commission of Nigeria, Mr. Chris Mayaki, who has created time to come and share uh, their experiences with regards to ensuring quality in open and distant uh, learning, that is Odell, in institutions of higher learning or higher education in Nigeria. So, we appreciate your presence and we look forward to learning more from your experience. Uh, we are also very happy you are a first learner. You are able to speak some Kiswahili. I'm also aware that we are hosting participants from institution of higher learning uh, or higher education drawn from different African countries. I wish to extend my warm welcome to you all and uh, to our country, Kenya, and to Kenyatta University in particular. We also know that there are other people from outside um, uh, Africa who are with us. And I want to say, Karibu Sana, thank you for coming to attend uh, this, um, uh, you know, um, workshop, which as we have said, it is one of its kind. Um, when uh, Dr. Muma was talking, uh, she indicated that uh, those who are coming from outside, there is somebody coming from the University of Bata. I don't know whether that person is here. Is that person here already? or not? No? I just wanted to say that uh, I went to school at uh, University of Alberta, so uh, I really wanted to see the person. I hope I'll be able to see the person. I'm glad to let you know that Kenyatta University, we have nine schools that represent a great opportunity for part, uh, participants and all the people who are here. Uh, in case you wanted to go to school, we want to say we welcome people from all walk of life. And um, currently, I can say we are hosting uh, 925 active international students. And I also want to say proudly that over 100 are from Nigeria. Yes. Um, the schools are School of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, School of Business, Economics and Tourism, School of Education, which I believe is the, uh, the biggest, School of Engineering and Architecture, School of Medicine, Nursing, uh, Pharmacy and Public Health, School of Law, Arts and Social Sciences, School of Pure and Applied Sciences. We also have the graduate school. And then we have very important for this uh, workshop, Digital School of Virtual and Open Learning. In line with the university's vision and mission, one of the objectives of Kenyatta University is to promote the development and expansion of higher education opportunities through initiation of new programs and alternative modes of delivery using modern technology. And um, I can tell you during COVID, Kenyatta University was, uh, I think the only university in Kenya 
that was able to admit our students virtually, more than 6,000 students virtually. So this is because we already had um, the digital school and we quickly were able to train our members of staff and we are able to give our programs virtually uh, for one whole semester. In tandem with the objective, the university has a strategic and goal, uh, uh, strategic goal to enhance access to university education to meet the ever increasing demands for higher education by strengthening the open distance and e-learning mode of delivery. As a member of the ACDE, Kenyatta University is committed to support the council uh, to achieve its objectives. Currently, we are hosting the ACD uh, uh, Secretariat and to ensure the smooth running of the Secretariat, we have seconded members of staff to work at the Secretariat headed by the Executive Director, Dr. Teresa Moma, who has just talked to us. Uh, Teresa Moma is the Department of Early Childhood and Special Needs Education. As a host to the ACDE Secretariat, Kenyatta University is also privileged to provide the Council Secretary, Secretary General a position that I hold currently. Additionally, Kenyatta University has played a, a leading role in expanding access and promoting public awareness of the benefits of e-learning through our digital school that has been in existence since 2014. I'm convinced that after today's training, ACDE will have a cohort of champions who train colleagues and members of staff in their own institution and countries to ensure that high quality standards are observed when delivering programs through Odell. Finally, our president, I now take this opportunity to welcome you to address us so that um, all those participants who are waiting can see the person who really initiated this workshop. So, uh, Professor Alambi, please address us. Thank you very much. Our own Professor Wainaina, shall we give him another round of applause, please? The Deputy Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Nigeria, Mr. Chris Wainaina, the first Vice President ACDE, and Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufemi Peters, the Secretary General and Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University, Professor Paul K. Wainaina. Permit me to acknowledge also the representative of our National Commission for Tertiary Education in the person of Mr. Emmanuel Awari, who is the Director of Quality Assurance from Ghana. I'm aware that our commission is also ably represented. Allow me also to take this opportunity to welcome all of you for creating time to participate in this very important training of trainers. I trust that our friends from the media are also present with us. So our distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like you all to join me to say a very, very big thank you 
to all the vice chancellors and the chief executives and director generals that have nominated you to participate in this workshop. I am very convinced that during this training, you will make very good use of these three days and come out fully equipped to roll out the training to your colleagues in your various institutions, and in particular, for those national universities commissions from Nigeria, from Ghana, South Africa, Mauritius, we encourage you to ensure that you would adopt or adopt the HCDE toolkit and work with it as much as promote and support it. In a very special way, I like to acknowledge and thank the Vice Chancellor of National um, Open University, Nigeria. He's been exceptionally, exceptionally supportive of this quality assurance drive. He supported it the last time, two years ago, when we had a workshop um, for the toolkit here in Ghana virtually. And this time round, he has supported it in no small means. I also like to thank Professor Ofule for the very, very hard work she's put in. And I told her yesterday that she represents excellence. She breeds it. And wherever you find Professor Christine Ofule, you can only be sure that excellence would show up. Equally, I like to thank profusely our own Professor Paul Wainaina, Vice Chancellor Kenyatta University for hosting the ACDE Secretariat, but also for allowing this workshop to happen at Kenyatta University. I mean, we can't say thank you enough, Professor Wainaina. Your support, your energy, your drive, we greatly appreciate you. And we say without the support you've given us, it would have been quite difficult for us to have the workshop, particularly in Kenya. And I can see, just as my brother, Professor, Professor Femi Peter said, I'm envious of those of you there because I can see how colorful and well organized it is. I am also reliably informed that we have representatives in the workshop from Kenya, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, South Africa, Ghana, and Mozambique. And we thank them very much for showing up. I have to apologize very sincerely for not being able to be physically present with you. As you all might be aware, the African Council for Distance Education is a continental educational organization comprising of African universities and other higher institutions of learning who are committed to expanding access to quality education and training through open and distance learning. We are aware that while this was the initiative of COVID-19, COVID-19 had actually changed a lot of things for us. And now we see that as has already been established, ODEL is here to stay. It's the new driver, and there are many key issues that requires the attention of institutions to ensure quality, but also particularly for regulators. And when I come to talk about the four key issues that I trust that this workshop might take into consideration, I will touch again on that. But I also would like to say that the ACDE has other global institutions that are a part of it. The Commonwealth of Learning 
Women has been a part of the ACDE and supported the ACDE in many diverse ways. And we took the opportunity to say a very big thank you to the Commonwealth of Learning, in particular, the president of the Commonwealth of Learning, Professor Asha Kanwa. We also have um, as we members of the ICDE, the International Council for Distance Education, which is also headquartered in Canada. And we have observer status at the African um, Union Commission as the lead implementing institution for the Commission's open distance and e-learning agenda. We participate actively in the Continental Education Strategy um, for Africa, the CESA. And I'm also glad to say that I am the coordinator for the CESA subcluster um, for open and distance education under the African Union Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to know that in view of the various changes and transformation taking place within the higher education environment, at the 44th board meeting of the ACDE held at UNESA last year, it was resolved that this workshop should take place. We are happy to be a part of it. All the members participating today are therefore the first cohort to train on the QA using the ACDE toolkit as train the trainers. And I'm happy also to note that all of the participants taking place in this workshop will automatically be listed as ACDE certified experts on ODE, as well as resource persons for the ACDE certification program. The ACDE Council drives its mandate through its four program areas, which include the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Agency, which is led by Professor Christian Ufule, who is the director and it's hosted by the Open University of Nigeria. They are the organizers of this workshop together with our chief host, the Kenyatta University. We also have the Technical Committee on Collaborations, which is led by Professor Leonard Fueja as the director and is hosted by the Open University of Tanzania. We also have the Advocacy and Knowledge Dissemination, which is hosted by Professor Impaini Makoa, and it's hosted by the University of South Africa, UNISA. We also have the Information and Communications Technology, ICT, which is led by engineer Hetam Haida and is hosted by the Open University of Sudan. With this, you can tell that the ACDE is very poised to provide the needed guidelines and support for open and distance education on the continent. In line with one of its mandates, it is to ensure that we have a certification program um, for the quality assurance process. And to do this, the SCDEQA tool has been developed. This tool has been developed in collaboration with a number of international bodies. It includes the Cold Rain, a number of them, um, Incahe in consultation, UNESCO as well. And the, the consensus for adapting the tool was actually um, reached with the UNESCO Cold Rain DEM, 
which is the Asian Distance Education Modernization Project, where the toolkit itself was validated and also um, it, it was adopted for use. With inputs from, um, I've mentioned the international bodies that um, contributed to it, we believe that the toolkit provides some kind of guideline for the management and regulation of ODL in the higher education space. This workshop therefore seeks to familiarize participants with the ACDE quality toolkit and how it can be used to maintain and enhance quality in ODEL. And we are very confident that by the end of this workshop, we would have some inputs for the ongoing review of the toolkit because the toolkit is a living document. At this point, I would like to take some few minutes to address some four key issues that I hope the workshop might touch on. The first is the issue of micro-credentialing. I mean, micro-credentialing has become a big deal and a key part of ODEL. And we see our Western part colleagues beginning to drive the pathways, the different pathways to higher education through micro-credentialing. We have the likes of MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, all of these um, leading global institutions are already leveraging micro-credentialing. And we have, whether it is micro-masters or it is um, micro-bachelors um, or it is micro-diplomas or it is the badging or whatever um, approach is being used, micro-credentialing has become a key part of ODEL. And this is something that the African continent needs to start paying attention to. So I'm looking forward to hearing experiences and inputs on how we can factor micro-credentialing and the recognition of micro-credentialing into our framework. The other thing that I would like to touch on is transnational education. We all are aware that transnational education is now the big deal in higher education. However, ODEL has completely transformed transnational education. And the question is, how do we regulate it? I am aware that the National Universities Commission has developed some guidelines which it released last year. I took a careful look at it. I have had opportunity to read it about five times and I wish to congratulate the National Universities Commission, my very good brother who is here with us, um, Mr. Chris. Um, Thank you very much and thanks to your commission for the good job. Um, I believe that other commissions may have similar guidelines, but I have not set eyes on those. I have set eyes on the NUC one, and I trust that you may share some thoughts on that at this workshop so that the regulators who are present who take a cue from that, because I think it has some very good inputs on the regulation of transnational education. I now would like to touch on the big elephant in the room at the moment, and I'm sure that all of you have heard about it, and that is the chat GPT. Chat GPT is a big deal. I'm aware that many of our international colleagues have already 
pulled um, stakeholders together to start discussing and looking at how we move forward with chat GTP um, in the higher education space, because it is changing the dynamics of everything. And for many of us who I believe are already aware of the chat GTP, this is an an artificial intelligence tool that is able to mimic an individual and write speeches, write essays, even do um, legal, um, legal work and many, many, many other things in a way that is personalized and customized that the traditional plagiarism checkers are not able to break through it. I mean, it, 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 it definitely goes by the traditional, um, um, how do you call it, plagiarism tools. Um, there have been many concerns raised and there have been many inputs to allay the fears about this new elephant in the room. But I believe that this workshop is going to touch on how we deal with chat GTP as Sarah uh, education institutions and regulators in Africa. And I look forward to ACDE, this workshop coming up with some kind of key issues to address in the near future on the chat GTP. And I believe we'll put the tables um, together and pull the key stakeholders around again in a high level round table to discuss chat GTP in Africa. Finally, I like to say that we are happy that this is one of the key steps in the ACDE certification program. Having said this, I I'm encouraging all of us to ensure that we take this training forward and that we make sure that after this training, we make use, active use of the toolkit. We believe that together we would ensure that the quality the recognition, the relevance, and the comparability of higher education, particularly from either um, open and distance education or technology enhanced education has been enhanced. I want on this note to thank all of you once again for accepting to be a part of this training and I look forward to the outcome of the workshop. I trust that it will go a long way. On that note, I say a very, very big thank you to us all, and we declare the workshop officially open. Thank you very much for your kind attention. The workshop is officially open. Let us give a better clap for Madam President. A better clap, louder and louder, please. And thank you very much, Madam President, for your address and officially opening this workshop. Madam President, we're now moving to the next session. And before I state what it is, our dear participants, we call upon you to check on your WhatsApp group, the dear participants. If, if uh, not everyone is a participant, so I think they know themselves. <laughs> The rest of you just become, and we hope that there is a link, Carol. Is there a link now? There is a link. The WhatsApp group for the participants. What we are requesting you to do is to join this meeting. Please don't dial in. Just join in and have your camera on. The participants join into the meeting. No dialing in and then have your cameras on. We will give you the next advice. And now I would like to call upon Dr. Moma to take us through the unveiling of the banner. Karibu sana. Technical, please raise them.
Thank you so much, Master of Ceremony, for this great opportunity. I want to invite all the guests seated up here to come and join me here. And um, we are going to have Chris and our Vice Chancellor. Uh, Chris, our Vice Chancellor, will support you to unveil the, now that the President has opened the workshop to unveil the banner so that we can officially start the program. Yeah, you can remove it. So I think uh, I did the Onyango here. Uh, the president, uh, distinguished participants, university leaders, uh, the vice chancellor, uh, it is no longer news that uh, the ACD has uh, worked tirelessly in a multi-stakeholder fashion uh, over the years to put together this toolkit. And as we alluded to earlier on, the toolkit uh, has come to stay. It is a veritable tool for driving quality. Uh, that notion that the things that we do uh, as education, uh, in, in delivering education, uh, must be seen to be uh, you know, at full strength at all levels. So I now have the distinct honor to congratulate ACDE and uh, to unveil this toolkit uh, in the hope that it will serve uh, to expand the frontier of knowledge and African higher education using the ODE model. Thank you and congratulations to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And over to our master of ceremony. Thank you. Just want to make sure we get the best shot of this moment. Okay, we'll take a few photos while you're there. We will confirm the best photo if the smiles are coming through too as well. Great. Thank you very much. You may take your seats. Our chief guest, Madam President, we have unveiled the banner as you may have followed online at that moment. Our dear participants, I hope you got the link and you just joined into the meeting. Again, we will call upon you at the right time. Now, my pleasure to call upon Dr. Jojo Nyango once again to take to the podium and this time to move a vote of thanks. Karibu. Distinguished guests, um, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. Thank you. Now, on behalf of Kenyatta University, I'm deeply honored to pass a vote of thanks to various persons and institutions that have been instrumental in making this uh, ACD quality assurance workshop possible. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the ACD uh, Council for the recommendation for this timely workshop. As you are aware, uh, open distance and e-learning is now on the uptick, and it's very, very important that we ensure the quality of these programs. And therefore, I acknowledge the ACD Council members for having thought through and come up with this timely workshop. And I would also wish to take this opportunity to thank our chief guest, Professor Goski Alabi, for the very insightful remarks. And she has touched on very key areas that include macro credentialing. And she has challenged us to uh, look at this area of uh, awards. She's talked about um, the internationalization of uh, our programs, and uh, she has warned us against the chat GBT, which we must be cognizant about because we are very soon going to find uh, students not really submitting their own work 
but work that has been actually developed by Chat GPT. So we thank um, Professor Alabi for the very insightful remarks that have actually set the tone for this workshop. Um, next, um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the SCDE Secretary General and uh, Kenyatta University Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Paul Wainaina, as I mentioned earlier, for agreeing to host the SED Secretariat, and more importantly, giving unwavering support to ensure the success of this workshop. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. Um, I would also uh, wish to thank the SED first vice, first vice President and Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria, uh, Professor Olofemi Peters, for first hosting the SCDE Quality Assurance Accreditation Agency and for enabling and supporting the director who is with us here, Christine uh, Fulwe, to organize the workshop. Uh, thank you, Christine, for joining us. And then uh, I thank the Higher um, Education Commission representatives. And I wish to acknowledge uh, Mr. Chris Mayaki for your insightful remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayaki. To the facilitators that have joined us, including my dear friend, uh, Dr. Ephraim Langi, um, thank you for joining us. And to all the participants within the country and those who have come from outside the country, thank you so much for gracing this workshop. We look forward to a very insightful, engaging, and meaningful workshop. Finally, I wish to thank the ACDE Secretariat, uh, led by the Executive Director, uh, Dr. Teresa Moma, for working around the clock behind the scenes to ensure the success of this workshop. And with her, the transport section, the ICT section, the KUCC uh, personnel, uh, our MC, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this workshop. We have really set the tone for the next three days that we are going to have this workshop. And we could just stand and give five rounds of applause to all the people I've mentioned and those that I may have inadvertently uh, forgotten. Okay, five rounds of applause. If you could just stand and stretch your leg. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you very much, Dr. Onyango for moving the vote of thanks. The clap you just made, our international participants, is known as the Nyayo clap. It comes in, in threes. Thank you. And now this is the moment that we had called upon the participants to have their cameras on. It is time to take a photo. Our chief guest, the president, you are online, madam, and we would like to take a photo with you. So kindly cameras on the participants. Our technical team is taking the photo. And if you are not uh, one of those who have joined the meetings online, like myself, just have hope that you, have, you will somehow be captured. So just be hopeful. And uh, here I'm addressing the high table as well. I know you've not joined online. Just be hopeful that uh, at some point your image will be captured. Technical team, please uh, give me a signal, a nod, should you have gotten the photos. Uh, Madam President, uh, participants online, please cameras on. Thank you, Professor, for the, the camera is on. The President's camera is on. Yes, thank you. Any participant on, we are taking the first photo, which is for the online participation. Please give me a nod if you have the shots done. We are good. Oh, still one more. We are informed that you are not uh, smiling. So please uh, do smile so the camera can take your image. 
Yes, uh, Professor Peter has a good smile there, sir. We appreciate. Yeah, Madam President, Professor Labi, good smile there. Uh, the participants, you're not doing so well, but you're trying. Uh, we are watching out to see how the smiles are coming through. Great. And are we done? Thank you very much. Uh, let's appreciate ourselves for that session. Madam President and our guests here, it's now my pleasure to invite you for our group photo. This one is a physical one. And we will request uh, the high table kindly to take seats out there. Our corporate office will be guiding us at the door. And uh, after the first photo, which will be composed of uh, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Wainaina, the Secretary General, uh, African Council of uh, Distance Education, Mr. Chris Mayaki on the photo also, Dr. Omoma will be there, and Christine, Madam Christine, I got your name right. Uh, that will be the first photo. So they are taking, moving out to take the first photo, joined by our Dean. Yes, Dr. Onyango, please join them for the first photo. We thank you so much, even as you make way out to take the photo. We will be joining you for the photo session shortly. Dr. Onyango, please join them for that first photo. As uh, they exit, we will also request the three facilitators. There are three facilitators here. The three facilitators. Yeah, please. You will be in the second photo, so please begin to make your way as well. The three facilitators, please make your way. And the last photo will be, you will join them, the participants. We are told you about 35 of you here. So please make way also and just stand by. You will be guided when to join the card photo. So please make your way out and thank you very much for coming. The next program will go on as scheduled. Thank you. It was my pleasure moderating the session. The rest of us, um, enjoy the rest of your day too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, okay. We will be here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I think it's one, uh, so it should be one that. Yes, but then. I'm good. Uh, good afternoon. 
So let's kindly break for lunch. We are coming back at 1.30, exactly at 1.30. KUCC restaurant, you're all welcome. I was asking. Now we are done. Uh, good afternoon to our online participants. I to let you know that uh, we've, we've gone for lunch and we'll be back at 1.30 Kenyan time. See you then. Good 
afternoon to our online participants. Thank you for sticking around. We want to let you know that we've gone for lunch and we are going to be back at 1.30 Kenyan time. Thank you. Thank 
Get this from the smoke cannabis. That the same makeup of what that is. Make me fly like say I'm an adding. Come bring some kind melodies. Oh, mommy, me self, no two past ideas. So many things inside the machine. Slide down the beating, the beating. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank 
Oh, my God. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh -huh. Yes, the music. Thank you so much uh, for coming back. As you will see from our program, we are behind the schedule. But I want to believe that now, the, the, since the opening is behind us, we are now to, ready to move forward with the program. Uh, our colleagues who are following us online, welcome so much. We are glad that you are with us. And I believe by the end of the day, uh, all of us are going to learn um, a lot from what we are going to share. At this juncture, we are going to have the commissions, the various commissions to make presentation. And I now want to... Yes, yes, come up front. We are going to be joined virtually at a later time um, by Professor Mary from Mauritius. Um, she will be joining us at exactly two for two Kenyan time. Yeah, she will be participating. I'm not very sure whether the commission, um, Professor Mike, is online. Maybe the technical team, you can be able to tell us if the Commission for University Education, Kenya, is online. Okay, so um, at this juncture now, I want to invite Dr. Ephraim um, to take us to facilitate this session. Please come up front. Thank you very much and welcome back from lunch colleagues. So as announced, we will have uh, at least three speakers and they will be talking about quality measures they take as national accreditation agencies, specifically in ODL. So we'll start with Mr. Chris Mayaki. We'll give you about 15 minutes and then we will see what time it will be. The Mauritius commissioner who will be speaking virtually will need to speak at exactly two o'clock because she has other events coming thereafter. Uh, do you have the paper? I Hello? The PowerPoint? Aha. Good. Uh, thank you, Dr. Teresa. Thank you, our moderator, our brother from South Africa, other distinguished participants. Uh, good afternoon, once again. Uh, I have the distinct honor, once again, to share insights, to speak on the role of the National Universities Commission of Nigeria in enhancing quality in open and distance education and e-learning in Nigeria. Can I have the next slide? Uh, we have exchanged a lot of pleasantries uh, prior to this moment. And I just want to, once again, 
bring the warm felicitations of uh, the Executive Secretary, National University Commission, Professor Abu Bakr Adam Rashid, the entire Nigerian University system, uh, which I told you earlier on today comprises 222 universities in Nigerian higher education space. Today is uh, populated with 222 uh, universities, uh, including the National Open University of Nigeria. Next. Uh, I'd like to also uh, say that we are happy to be here, uh, to be part of this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, we align ourselves with the ideals. We identify ourselves with the purpose of this workshop because of the huge benefits uh, to be derived. And I would like to quickly And I attune Americans, university leaders, the the old that we need to put together the the the, the right echo. A guarantee uh, next <laughs> is, there, is this a pointer oh good thank you very much About the National Universities Commission, uh, 60 years ago, uh, the National Universities Commission was founded post-colonial. Uh, Nigeria became independent in 1960. Uh, uh, and then the National Universities Commission was established as a department, as a small department in the cabinet office uh, in 1960 to coordinate the orderly development of university education in Nigeria. Uh, at that time, I'd like to share, uh, a, you know, a, a, a historical, uh, uh, you know, piece. At that time, the colonial, the British colonial government had calculated or miscalculated that uh, three universities uh, in the British English West Africa would serve the purpose of the entire West African region. And so they established the University of Ghana in Ligon. They established the University of Ibadan and the University of Sierra Leone. Uh, but now they have been proven wrong. Because for us in Nigeria, between 1960 to date, Nigeria now has 222 universities and we're still counting. Uh, the commission uh, has uh, the responsibility of regulating university education and enhancing the quality of university education through uh, the following instrumentalities. We, approve, uh, we have to grant uh, approval for, for any university or any institution of higher learning to mount uh, courses and programs. I mean, if you don't have our stamp of authority, you have no courses to run. We also determine and maintain uh, the minimum academic standards. We do this in a multi-stakeholder college. We do not have resident experts at the commission. We, uh, you know, tap from the reservoir of experts to be found in the Nigerian University space. We also monitor compliance or otherwise with the extant uh, regulatory framework. We conduct accreditation of academic programs, both program and institutional accreditation. Uh, we also uh, provide guidelines and the processing of applications for the establishment of uh, private universities. And, uh, and I must add that 
from time to time, the National Investors Commission is uh, called upon, you know, to, to formulate uh, and implement policy uh, for the orderly development of university education in Nigeria. Uh -huh. uh, one of the major features of uh, the Nigerian higher education experience is access, lack of access. Uh, Nigeria, with a population of over 200, and one of my colleagues told me that Kenya is 49 million. Okay, that's Lagos and Kano states combined together. You know, so, so, yeah. So with over 200 million people, uh, we're about to uh, conduct our census now and just watch out in the next two, three months, you know, you'll have an idea of what the population of Nigeria is. Uh, so we have a huge gap between demand and supply. And every year, we have average about 1.5 million Nigerian kids are planning to go to university. But the 222 universities put together can only accommodate about 600,000. So uh, the balance of uh, nearly 900,000 or 800,000 are on their own. You know, whether they're, they're financially or intellectually capable, they have to look elsewhere. Uh, and I think this is where the case has now been made you know, for ODL delivery, uh, wherein we think that through delivery system, uh, we'll be able to in Nigeria. Maybe you want to do it monthly? Yeah. So what is the way forward, how can you keep such an enthusiastic, such an energetic, youthful population? How can you deny them uh, access to this uh, resource, this, uh, uh, you know, this higher education that has been considered to be, a, you know, we whether as a nation, uh, You know, that uh, the open and distance learning mode of university education is a veritable tool, a viable alternative to, uh, uh, you know, to education delivery with a high capacity to accommodate a large number of intakes. Uh, that's why we founded the uh, National Open University of Nigeria in 1983. Uh, and I can proudly say that we have now also, uh, you know, approved 17 universities. You know, we have given them... Uh, uh, the go ahead uh, to, to, to have their distance learning centers uh, with the hope that they will uh, transform into dual mode universities. Next. Uh, what are the steps uh, that we are taking as a university brand, as a university system uh, to, to ensure to enhance quality of university education, including uh, ODE and uh, e learning in Nigeria? Uh, one of the stepping stones is the introduction of the core curriculum, basic uh, core curriculum, uh, minimum academic standards uh, in 2022. Hitherto, we had the benchmark minimum academic standards, but then curriculum being the dynamic process that it is, we found some missing elements. And uh, Nigeria decided that it was high time we re-engineer our curriculum, bring, bring them to speed, you know, and make them consistent with global uh, and local uh, realities. And so we introduced uh, the CCMAS to ensure that all our university programs are uplifted to global standards while they remain responsive to local uh, needs. Uh, as a measure, we have also uh, since uh, introduced uh, the, the, you know, we have commissioned a committee on, 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 on the problem of illegal uh, universities, degree mills that are unauthorized, you know, unapproved, uh, so that we, we in in a way, we uh, liaise with uh, some, several agencies, the anti-corruption agency, the police, uh, the intelligence community, uh, so that we can step the tide of uh, illegal uh, universities operating in the Nigerian space. Uh, we have also uh, you know, uh, provided for and uh, 
you know, make sure that we have uh, consummated guidelines to ensure that uh, newly established uh, universities are of global standard. Next. Uh, we recommend that admitting so many students through the ODE mode uh, can expose us to a lot of risks, and that could uh, impinge on the quality of those uh, uh, programs. And so to mitigate this risk, uh, we have uh, four, about five of NUC's uh, 12 directorates have been designed to assure and enhance the quality of degree awarded uh, in, uh, by Nigerian universities. Uh, one of them is the director of uh, academic planning. Uh, under that directorate, we make sure that we, before you mount any program, we have to go and do a resource verification of the resources available to you. Uh, human resources, uh, the curriculum, the content, the, the, the workshops, the learning resources, the e-learning, the hard, uh, the library, and the entire gamut of resources that you require to, to, to start a program. We must uh, visit such an institution before we can give you the stamp of authority. And then when we do that, we then invite the director of accreditation to visit, to look at, uh, to juxtapose between conformity, you know, or deviation. Uh, to, 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 to the extent uh, regulatory requirements. And then we have the director of inspection and monitoring. Uh, on a periodic basis, we go to visit and check uh, what the universities are doing. Then we have the director of, for the establishment of private universities. Uh, we have... We have our own proverbial... Uh, 14 stations of the cross, where we subject intending private universities through a very rigorous process, uh, very Herculean task uh, to make sure that uh, quality is uh, enhanced and adhered to. And then the director of open and distance education. This is the director that is preoccupied with driving the process of open distance and e-learning. They help us to promote uh, this mode of learning. Next. Uh, these are the, uh, the, 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 the responsibilities of uh, the mandate of the commission through the, the, the Director for the Open Distance and E-Learning to promote and coordinate the development of quality open distance and e-learning and transnational education. Uh, the President, uh, President Goski uh, Alabi alluded to the fact that the National Universities Commission and Nigeria indeed has just consummated its uh, uh, guidelines on transnational education. And I'm happy to say that uh, my colleagues, Professor Ofule and uh, Professor Adewara from the University of Lagos were working uh, assiduously to fine tune those guidelines where we hope to invite uh, foreign uh, providers to, to, to through a competitive, six competitive models come to Nigeria and, and play a role and provide and expand access to higher education. We, uh, you know, this uh, director also helps us to review per periodically the regulatory framework uh, to advise the federal government also on the desirability and conditions for the establishment of ODL uh, institutions. Uh, they also facilitate and strengthen the development of institutional professional capacity and then mainstream and coordinate the orderly delivery of degree programs via the ODE and then forge and sustainable partners. How else can you, you know, operate as a university system if you operate in your cocoon? So we place a lot of premium on the power of partnership, the power of collaboration as a Nigerian university uh, brand. Uh, NUC's mandate continues. We'll share this slides anyway. Yeah. Continue, please. Uh, the NUC has also uh, you know, uh, undertaking the following pursuit, pursuant to its uh, mandate and the agenda to guarantee quality. I spoke about the notion of quality, that fit for purpose, that notion that our processes, our programs, our delivery system, our learning outcomes must be seen to be operating at full strength at any time. I think this is what quality is all about. And so we have carried out the following, the development of the ICT enabled and supported blended learning uh, you know, uh, system. Uh, we have developed the guidelines, as I mentioned, uh, the development of quality assurance instruments for distance learning institutions. We do this in close collaboration with the National Open University of Nigeria. Uh, we, from time to time, uh, undertake uh, quality assurance visits to distance learning institutions 
And then we also uh, undertake periodic surveys and assessment visits. Uh, if you don't go back and forth, how do you place yourself on a continuum? How do you assure yourself that you are fulfilling the mandate of quality assurance? And some of the outcomes of uh, our activities, as you can see, when you uh, check, you go and see the doctor, when you, you do a, a medical check, you come out very confident, isn't it? And this is what uh, this process has led to. We have increased confidence now. We're beginning to attune, you know, stakeholders, you know, uh, parents, uh, benefactors alike, you know, to the, uh, the pivotal role that uh, ODL mode can, you know, can, can play in, in broadening access and equity in higher education. We are hoping that this will also help in consolidating the par parity of esteem. You know, there is no, uh, you, know, the, you know, when you meet the people that went to, oh, I've been warned. <laughs> okay. Uh, we hope that we'll consolidate the parity of uh, the esteem and standards of the two modes, increase the number of distance learning institutions with the attendant increase, and then sustain interest of foreign providers in the Nigerian educational space through the uh, TNE. Next. These are all the, some of the programs we have conducted in conjunction with now, with uh, the common rules of learning, the retro doll, uh, the, 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 the UNESCO, uh, and uh, the, the, the Ministry of Education. We're also currently reviewing the guidelines for the licensing of private open universities and the draft uh, framework for transnational education that I alluded to. Uh, we just keep reeling out what we are doing as a university, as a regulatory agency. Uh, we think that we need to assure ourselves as to who can establish uh, an open university and the conditions are dear to. Next. Uh, in conclusion, and uh, I'd like to uh, say that the NUC uh, is, uh, you know, uh, very uh, delighted to be part of this workshop. And uh, like I undertook earlier on, we hope that uh, in a stakeholder collegiate, we will uh, redouble our efforts as a commission uh, to work with uh, ACDE, with uh, uh, you know uh, national regulatory agencies and the higher education institutions in Africa, uh, so that we can uh, you know you know uh, push the agenda of ODE and make sure that they're fit for purpose and uh, we can quality assure them. And we hope that the NEC will uh, continue to expand access. Uh, but with quality, uh, the, con the Commission will continue to layers with and collaborate with organizations and institutes such as Kenyatta, such as ACDE, uh, so that we can promote capacity. You know, this workshop is about improving our executive capacity uh, on ODE, and we will continually uh, promote safeguards, ensure compliance with its guidelines, with ceaseless improvements in the delivery of global standards. Uh, through the distance learning mode. It is on this note that I thank you for the opportunity and I hope and I pray that this workshop, you know, will yet again, you know, like I said, broaden the frontier of knowledge, especially uh, those to do with quality uh, for, you know, for the uh, ODE uh, delivery. And I hope we will have a very fruitful and productive uh, three days. I thank you once again and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This one doesn't seem to be cooperative enough. We need to call it assure. Yes, we need to call it assure it. Thank you very much for that insightful presentation. Uh, it just reminded me whether we are going to have presentations so that we can share them with the rest of the participants. Yeah. Um, the next speaker has to be the virtual speaker. And, and I've just sent a, a message now to ask her to log in. I would like to have a speaker who is here. Otherwise, we would disadvantage them in terms of time. So we can, in the meantime, it's just a few minutes before two. In the meantime, we can entertain any questions or comments whilst we check whether Prof. Romela has logged in. Once we see her, we can start her off. So are there any, any questions or comments on the presentation that has been made? Some explicit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes. 
Thank you. Uh, I've seen a mod that you have set uh, a directorate almost uh, within the NUC. I hope I'm right. Um, dealing with open distance electronic learning. When was this established? Because I think this would be then the best way uh, to go with other commissions. I'm wondering whether it may be if, if this has been established in Kenya. I know there's been an establishment of a, a, a guideline on uh, ODEL or e-learning for that matter. But whether there is a dedicated directorate for it to be able to focus on issues of ODEL that I haven't known. When was it established? Is it after ODEL? Thank you very much, both. So you didn't introduce yourself. Oh. I'm Professor Nguka Gordon of Masinde Maluru University of Science and Technology. I'm the director in charge of ODEL there. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. The director for Open Distance and E-Learning of the National Universities Commission uh, came to be in, I think, in 2018. 2018, Professor Ophelia? It was in 2018, yeah. We uh, agreed that we needed a dedicated directorate to, you know, spearhead, to promote, to escalate, you know, this uh, business of ODL. Because for us, we came to the realization that uh, ODL is too herculean a task, uh, too important a task to be left for just everybody to to, to deal with, and uh, creating that institutional. Uh, you know, that hub has really helped us because we don't know where the box stops. We know where to go to. We know what stuff in to bring to bear. So I think it was in 2018 or thereabout. Earlier, was it earlier? Okay, so maybe it was, yeah. Okay, no, actually it used to be a different, yeah, yeah. But then the Directorate for Open Distance and E-Learning, the, 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 the precursor now metamorphosed into the Dodel in 2018, and that has really helped us uh, to streamline, you know, to uh, serve as the champion, as an advocate. And we are happy to provide free service to you. If you want to come to Abuja, come and shadow us, come and understudy the processes leading to the, you know, creation of that, uh, where we're going to host you, please. Uh, be at liberty to visit Abuja where I, I, I give you my word that we will host you so that when you leave, you will have the full uh, dossier as to the processes uh, uh, leading to the establishment of that uh, uh, directorate. Okay. Teresa, I thought we are friends. <laughs> oh, it's a friendly question. It's a friendly question. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, um, for taking us through what the NUC Commission is doing. And I'm glad towards the end of the presentation, you did indicate that NUC is opening to partner with other partners. And you mentioned the ACD. And of course, you know my concern is on ACD. Um, I, I wanted to hear from you SED now we are working on this SED quality assurance toolkit which I believe and now we have our first cohort who are going to be supporting us to train many more uh, what opportunities exist that NUC can utilize the SED quality assurance toolkit in uh, uh, member institutions, the 200 universities, so that we can be able to champion quality together. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear friend, my sister, uh, Teresa, Dr. Teresa. As you well know, uh, when the ACD executive paid us a courtesy call in, in our national headquarters, uh, we did not hide our joy you know, at the uh, painstaking efforts that you put together to develop, uh, to consummate uh, the toolkit. And at that courtesy call, we also uh, re-echoed our belief, you know, in the utilitarian value, you know, implicit in that uh, toolkit. And so you're talking to the converted. And uh, because we have such 
Yeah, because we have such convenient power. I mean, there is the National University Commission is a nodal point. There is no way you can access the, the the higher education space in Nigeria. I mean, without recourse to the National University Commission. And uh, you are right to recognize that the NUC will play a very pivotal role. And I hereby, on behalf of the commission, uh, undertake that we will work uh, in active commitment, you know, to ensure that the toolkit, because the principles are the same. The principles of quality, uh, they are cross-cutting, they are indiscriminate. Uh, there's one expected outcome at any attempt at uh, ensuring quality, and that is to give visibility to make sure that you work for that reputational capital. You know, reputation is the most important capital for any educational enterprise. And so the NUC will uh, use, utilize its convenient power. We think that also we will not stop at that level. We need to also uh, devolve. We need to do some cascading sessions, you know, within uh, the university system so that we can uh, pass the message and uh, make sure that uh, it is part and parcel of our processes. So uh, go to sleep, you know, with your two eyes uh, closed. Uh, the NUC will and has always been a partner in progress. Thank you. I thought we will meet in Nigeria to ask the question. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. I'm pleased to be well informed and educated about what NUC is doing and has done over the years. Yes, a lot has been done, but still, there's an area I would like to highlight, connectivity. So the experience in the banking sector now in Nigeria has shown us that definitely teaching through or learning through or there will be problematic. Is there any way the, the government or NUC can enter into partnership with uh, uh, telecommunication uh, uh, companies to alleviate the sufferings of learners and teachers in this direction? Thank, Thank you me. very much. I completely agree with you, uh, especially during the pandemic. I think uh, the pandemic exposed the high level of infrastructural deficit you know, to be found in our educational, uh, higher educational space. Uh, and I know that over the years, universities, either as standalones, as individual entities, uh, have worked, you know, in one way or the other to uh, ensure the penetration of technology, you know, in what we do. Uh, and I think uh, this is one matter that has uh, continued to engage the minds of, you know, policy makers, you know, university leaders, university management, uh, university councils. And I think we have gotten to that defining moment now, uh, having been taught the lesson of our, life, our lives by the pandemic, wherein we need to uh, close ranks. You know, we need to uh, look for ways and means of uh, having the broadband and uh, super highway or whatever they call it, the backbone. Otherwise, uh, we, we're just wasting our time. We won't be able to uh, derive the maximum benefit. So uh, it's a policy issue, is a is a matter before management, is a matter that requires funding. Uh, I will take the message back, you know, and uh, in management at the highest level, we will escalate this matter because yes, uh, we have gotten to the point where there is no hiding place, you know, for what technology can do, for what financing technology can do so as to derive the maximum uh, benefits of the ODL. Is there any other question? I think I have earned myself a cup of tea now. And I thank you very much for your sustained interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you very much. I have earned more than just a cup of tea. <laughs> um, it's roughly about four minutes to two o'clock. I, I just want to check whether Prof. Romela from Mauritius is logged in. Professor Romela, if you are online, just to speak. Good afternoon, Professor Romela. There's 
She doesn't seem to be online yet. It's three minutes to two o'clock. I'm sure by now she would be online if she's having no problem. Good afternoon, Professor Romela. She is not online yet. There are so many things that can go wrong with technology. Yeah. In the next two minutes, if she doesn't pitch, we will take the next presentation. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Professor Romela. I'm sure she has run into one problem or another. What we'll do is to take the next presentation and I can call her in the meantime and find out if there are any challenges that, that she's facing. And then she can come after the, the next one. Thank you very much. I would like to invite you to do your presentation. Hopefully it will be 15 minutes. You may not be as lucky as he was. <laughs> <laughs> So good afternoon, and uh, I would like to uh, begin from appreciating and also encouraging uh, the ACD uh, team for inviting Ghana to make this presentation on how to uh, quality assured uh, distance and e-learning uh, at Ghana. And my presentation is going to be business. So I'm going to cover uh, ODL in perspective, looking at the various uh, definitions and concept use. Then I'll be looking at the Ghanaian contest where we have code of good practice, that is the quality assurance measures. Then I will look at the challenges uh, JTEC is facing with regard to implementing OD year. Then I will look or discuss the quality assurance assessment instruments that we have developed to quality assured uh, our distance education. The next will be the next line of action going forward. But because of time, I'm going to skip a few. The ODL in perspective, definition of concepts and modern trends, I'm going to skip that because I'm told we are all certified ODL uh, <laughs> consultants. Let me put it in that way because we are here. Yes, that was what uh, Professor Goski told us in the morning. So I will skip this and look at what is happening in the Ghanaian education space. So please go to the Ghanaian one. Yes, because I'm sure all of us know these things. Just to situate my presentation, that's why I try to do that. So now let's look at what is happening in Ghana, right? And at times, Ghanaians don't feel comfortable when Nigerians take the lead in presentation, <laughs> right? But uh, always at the football matches, we try to beat them. So, so I'm going to beat him today too. Now let's look at a, a variable 
uh, reports that try to indicate that uh, admissions to uh, admission for qualifying, I'm trying to make a room for why uh, ODL is becoming uh, so much important in Ghana. We have a lot of people who qualified for admission into our traditional uh, universities, unfortunately, uh, because of space and other uh, facilities, they are not able to get uh, uh, admissions. So they have found a different route to uh, get admission through the ODL. So if you look at it from other countries, ODL has become important because, I mean, it's an access route for mature and also workers, and that is exactly what is happening uh, in Ghana. Next. Now, if you look at the levels of engagement or the various types of ODL, Ghana is not different. Ghana's situation incorporates all levels of engagement, such as distance learning programs. We have distance learning programs, so what they have distance learning units. We have also distance learning centers. We have distance learning institutions, and then the distance learning consortium. So in Ghana, when we come, you see programs that are typically designed for distance learning programs. Then we have within universities, units or centers being established to offer these distance learning programs. Then we have institutions that are purely organized for distance uh, learning. And then we have two or three institutions also coming together to offer this distance uh, learning education. Now, if you look at the mode of delivery, particularly what is happening now is that we are using the dual mode. That is what is happening in most of the uh, so-called institutions offering distance programs, and they are combining the face-to-face, -face, the traditional, and that of technology. In addition, they are also adopting internet and technology or rented mode, such as online, branded, and others to offer uh, ODL. Next, please. Now we have uh, one institution in Ghana that is purely for uh, open distance learning. And that is where uh, Professor Gorski is the consulting dean at Lawe Open University. The government of Ghana is now trying to establish an open universities. We've done a lot, and I'm sure any moment from now, we should be able to have or establish an open uh, university in Ghana. But as of now, what we have is the Lawe one. We also have translational education in Ghana, but what is happening there is that we have agents that have established offices, and then they recruit Ghanaians to offer or to benefit uh, from international education. So they don't go through what we call accreditation. They go through what is known as recognition. We only recognize their centers. And because students are going to go there, we try to make sure that the situation over there is fit for purpose. So they go through uh, recognition instead of accreditation. Next. Move on. Now, let me talk briefly on this code of conduct or the good practices that has been done to uh, really uh, ensure quality of the ODLs. And we are talking about frameworks for accreditation, qualification, and quality assurance. Are important for you to uh, manage the ODLs, we need to have frameworks for accreditation and quality assurance, whether you are importing or exporting uh, educational services. So the beginning of our code of conduct is to have a framework. So for performance standards, many quality assurance agencies like uh, our NVC, they have also developed a code of conduct for good practices. In U USA, UK, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, they have this code of conduct. In Ghana, we have also developed code of conduct to uh, assure quality of the ODS. Now, the code of conduct, if you look at 18, 2001, 
is that we don't need to focus only on input criteria. We should also focus on the output. So if I'm using the system approach, you have your input, you have your processes, and you have your output. So we need to quality assured all these processes. So in addition to uh, the GTEC uh, accreditation requirements, we have developed the inputs and then the output criteria for ensuring uh, the quality of ODLs. Next. So what I intend to do is to take you through what are these inputs and what are these outputs that we have put in place to assure quality of the distance learning. The first one is to contextualize definition of distance learning. When institutions uh, knock at our doors, what we ask them is to explain to us what is the nature of the, uh, the distance learning that they want to do. Is it going to be a dual process, a blended one? Is it going to be what and what? Even the level, is it going to be purely a uh, 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 distance learning institution or they are going to have a center or they are going to run a program? So that is the first question that we ask them and we need to uh, attempt to contest contextualize that. The second one is to request a policy, OD, ODL policies from the institutions and then the support systems uh, that they have put in place. And all these uh, statements will help us to understand the institutional commitment and support before we even look at their uh, documents. And then we want their policies to explain their vision and mission and how this vision and mission dovetails into the overall university's uh, vision and mission statement so that there's some kind of uh, alignment. Then we also want them to provide us with the admission criteria. We know uh, there are different uh, shades of people applying. So we want to have differentiations in terms of admission uh, requirements. Then we are also interested about the assessment methods, certifications and qualifications gain. And our interest will be on student assessment, NENA authentication, back, work authorship, and then the examination security. These are two things that we look for when it comes to assessment. Move on. Then we're also interested about the professional qualifications and experiences, particularly about the, the, the instructors. And we're also interested about the competencies of the coordinators and the administrative staff, the kind of trainings that they have given uh, to them. The next is about the development of the programs and the courses. And normally this required a teamwork and we want to see how the program uh, is going to be developed. These are all input things that we, we want to look at it. Okay. Then the student support and access to course learning. So these are the inputs. Let me move on to the output. Then the monitoring. The monitoring is also back. The monitoring is very, very important to us. We want to know the institutional own, the institution's own monitoring system that they have put in place to really uh, monitor, review, and ensure continuous improvement of the ODL program. Now let's move on to the output. The output, the first is for the institutions to go through the various accreditations uh, requirement, both institution and program. Then we're also interested about the student satisfaction, then the student performance, particularly the reduction in the attrition rate, completion rate, we are also interested. Move on. Move on. Because I will be leaving the, the slides. So move on, go to the challenges. There are some challenges that we are facing with regard to the implementation of the ODS and I would like to uh, share with you. We have problems with uh, integrating technology and media has become a complex and costly and most institutions are not uh, able to do that. Then the use and distribution of online materials, copyrights and ownership of courses materials can also present a problem. Then home study may be more difficult than conventional classrooms, and that can also lead to high attrition. Move on. Move on. Then challenges with issues associated with policy. I mean, we ask them to submit a policy and become a problem. Student enrollment, graduation rate, curricular and course designs 
are all issues that if they are not properly planned for can affect the effectiveness of the DE uh, program. Move on. So most of the problems a report has been done that talk about lack of expertise and trained DE staff and overreliance on print media for communication. So these are some uh, problems that we are, we are seeing. Then with the Nigeria's uh, uh, case, we also have a number of, pub, particularly public universities establishing uh, 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 centers, study centers. And if you check on the enrollment levels over there, even more than the, the enrollment at the, uh, at the regular institutions. And that can also affect quality. Because if you check on the SSR, you could carry that the SSR may be very, very high. And these are things that uh, we need to look at it. Please move on. Move on. Move on, move on, move on. Oh, oh. Now, these are few of the instruments that we have developed uh, at JTEC. First, we have this type of education is, uh, institutional assessment. We have one for assessing the institution. We have another one for assessing the programs on distance education. We have also developed quality assurance policy for the regulation of distance education. And this policy was very, very uh, crucial because of COVID. And a lot of institutions started running uh, a, a, whole, a whole lot of things. So there was a need for us to develop that policy. So we have that policy in place. Then I've spoken about the code of good uh, practice. Then we have the distance education concept note. As somebody said in the morning, there are a whole lot of concepts and terminologies being used in the field or in the space of uh, distance uh, education. So it's very, very important for us to understand. So move on. This is a con uh, conclusion. Move, move on to the next. So going forward, what is JTEC going to do? And as uh, Prof said, we are going to work with ACDE to implement the two keys. So we are going to adopt the two keys for our institutional program assessment as well as institutional audit. Now, the problem that maybe we have to discuss at the back door is that JTEC has assessment instruments. So how whether we are going to harmonize this assessment instrument to take into uh, consideration the, the that of the ACDE, or we are going to go solo by using uh, ACD two keys, but these are things that uh, I think we can discuss later. So on this note, I'm very, very grateful for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And not only for the beautiful presentation, but also for being so punctual. <laughs> um, thank you. Thanks. We now welcome Professor Romila Mohi from Mauritius. She has logged in, she's online. Just before she comes in, I uh, would like to introduce her briefly. Prof. Romila is the commissioner for the Higher Education Commission in Mauritius. So she's responsible for the quality enhancement of the higher education system in that country. Before that, she worked as the higher education specialist for many years at the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver, Canada. And during a time, she implemented a lot of progressive uh, projects in higher education institutions in sub-Saharan Africa, including the Pebble project that you are all familiar with. She was also vice chancellor of the University of Mauritius for many years before she left for call. So we are having the privilege of a highly skilled and experienced person in higher education talking to us. The floor is yours, Prof. Romila. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ephraim. And uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen and dear colleagues. I'm sure there are a number of friends there with whom we've been working when I was at call. Hi to everybody. 
I really apologize for really uh, making you wait, uh, but we had actually another very interesting webinar uh, just before on implementation of our DIS convention on recognition of qualifications over, over the region, which I, I'm sure would have been very pertinent to, to you as well. Uh, so let me just uh, share the screen uh, so that I can start with my presentation. Right, let me get, give me one minute. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Can you all see my screen? Yes? Okay, right. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon is more about what we've done at the level of the HEC Mauritius of, uh, uh, in terms of quality measures for open and distance learning. Uh, this presentation, I uh, have prepared it together with my colleague here, Ms. Khan. And what we are going to talk about uh, is, uh, okay, I'm trying to each time to move this, right. Right. So um, I will I will want to situate a bit the context uh, be, before before I start uh, on quality assurance. Uh, Mauritius, we have at the University of Mauritius. Uh, been developing open and distance learning courses for about 15 years now. And uh, we have also an open university in Mauritius that uses a lot of distance learning and I would say online learning as well. But the, the real enthusiasm came after the, uh, during big uh, COVID in 2020, when as uh, with uh, all the countries in the world, we had to stop. Uh, going on campus for courses and uh, the universities had to be really innovative in terms of uh, putting the materials there. So then at the same time, the Higher Education Commission, the one where I work, I'm going to give a brief on that, uh, came up with a number of, I would say, accompanying tools and instruments uh, to put in place the open and distance learning. And I'm going just to have a brief overview over the different projects that have been done in Mauritius and also what has been the involvement of the HEC. So uh, before I come straight to the subject, I'll um, talk a little bit about my organization, which you might not be all familiar with. Uh, so we were the former tertiary education commission, Tech. I'm sure many of you uh, who have been involved in open and distance learning were in the famous Diaza conference that was held, I think, 2012 or 2014 in Mauritius. Most of the people who are in this world of ODL tell me, oh, yeah, we were in Mauritius. And at that time, there was Tech the Tertiary Education Commission. So following the promulgation of the Higher Education Act 2017, in 2020, the HEC was set up and it uh, was set up uh, together with the Quality Assurance Authority. So uh, split into two organizations to oversee uh, the higher education sector in Mauritius, to look at the quality assurance of the sector, et cetera. And we have our, as responsibility to monitor oversee, regulate, et cetera, fund 10 public universities, and we have the responsibility to monitor 40 private higher education providers. And you can see in that uh, word cloud, uh, our different objects, uh, we, are, we deal with accreditation, we deal with uh, recognition of qualifications, we deal with uh, standards for, for open and distance learning. And in terms of accreditation, we are very strict and no program can be run in this country if it's not ha has not been accredited by HEC. And in 2020, we have developed uh, our strategic plan for the commission, where I put a picture there, and uh, it's available on our website. And it does talk a lot about digitalization of the higher education sector. And with this comes all the e-learning, learner management systems of universities, etc. So we are full in this whole endeavor of uh, looking at uh, open and distance learning and of course looking at the quality assurance of it. So basically this is the mandate of the HEC. We accredit all the programs, face-to-face, -face, online, blended learning. We license and regulate all the providers 
that come to the country. So it could be online providers as well. So we regulate them. And the Quality Assurance Authority is more, um, uh, has more as mandate to promote, maintain quality assurance and even for online education. So quality assurance in ODL, this is one of my favorite slides. Ephraim knows a lot about it. Of course, I'm not too sure whether it's Albert Einstein. I think he quoted that. Uh, so when, when I started my work on quality assurance in blended and online learning, there were two schools of thought. Most people were saying the certificate from the university is going to be the same. So why is it that when you move to blended learning, you should have different standards? So big discussion, debates, et cetera. And there were many universities were saying at that time, and I'm sure Ephraim would recall, we should have the same standards, be it face-to-face -face and e-learning and, um, and uh, blended learning. And uh, uh, fundamentally, I believe it's very different. The whole pedagogy should be different. Everything is different. So why is it that we're going to assess two different things with the same instruments? We are bound to, to really fail. And this is where the whole concept of the uh, new standards, the ACD toolkit, call toolkit, all over the world, people started developing toolkits. And uh, we, we were very happy about that. So uh, I like uh, very much this cartoon, which I feel really um, explains uh, that there are major differences. And if we want to be equitable, uh, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, we leave its whole life believing, believing that it is stupid. We have to really make sure that we are observing values on equity and then develop the appropriate instruments. Uh, this pertains to a consultation. So in September 2021, we were mandated for the by the SADC secretariat for the SADC region uh, to determine with all the public and private universities if tomorrow we are going for full uh, ODL culture, uh, what would be the desired achievements at the level of the country. And uh, this was done uh, through a survey with, uh, our, I think, around 21 questions directed to vice chancellors and director generals of universities in Mauritius. And you can see that many of them were talking about, of course, access and how would you enable uh, equity, etc. And that there needs to be guidelines for online delivery and then needs to demonstrate compliance to guidelines. So this was uh, basically a very quick overview of what was required. And also when we started going deeper, into the institution about what would be needed in terms of policies, strategies, and resources. And one of the major policy that was coming up was the, of course, the ODL policy and the quality assurance standards for blended learning and use of e-pedagogy. So this was like, a, I would say, one of the most important uh, a uh, tool that the universities in Mauritius needed to be able to go forward with open and distance learning. Uh, so when I came back from the Commonwealth of Learning uh, in 2020, and that was really at the beginning of COVID, uh, I initiated a study ensuring quality in online teaching and delivery in higher education institutions in Mauritius in line with the Sustainable Goal 4. And you would see that Ephraim is there, uh, he was one, uh, our, one of our main, I would say the main reviewer of this study. And this was really an eye opener uh, in terms of whether universities were really doing online learning, were they doing blended learning, were they doing emergency remote teaching. And what we found out is that most of them, because of this urgency uh, to continue imparting knowledge to the students when the campuses were closed, they all went for emergency remote teaching, like recording lectures, et cetera. And obviously, when we judge upon the satisfaction of learners uh, at the end of the lockdown, 
uh, in Mauritius, where the learners were not very happy because basically there was not much engagement and not much of real online learning. So we did surveys with uh, at the level of the whole country with heads of quality assurance, officers in charge of open distance learning, and chairpersons of the Higher Education Commission, the QE, and directors and vice chancellors. And uh, these surveys showed us, uh, and we also reviewed the courses. We reviewed five UOM, University of Mauritius courses, and Open University of Mauritius courses uh, were evaluated using quality assurance rubrics uh, for online courses. And this evaluation instrument that we use had eight categories based on course navigation, course content, instructional design, course structure, student support, technological and multimedia tools, student assessment and quality assurance. And I thought that was very important to indicate today because this is much in line with the ACGE toolkit. So we use a bit the similar approach. And then we had all the findings of the study and the impact of the project. And we did notice uh, a, a few strengths, but mostly there were lots of gaps into really adhering to quality assurance of on open and distance learning. So we came up with a number of short-term recommendations and long-term ones. And at that point in time, I think that was uh, late 2020, beginning 2021, where we started developing handbooks to design online and blended learning courses. We started uh, having a lot of, uh, I would say, awareness and advocacy with the universities that you re really should go for proper pedagogy for open and distance learning. Uh, this is a case study that we did at the Open University of Mauritius because basically they have been using distance learning tools for some time and they were using an OU Open University Learn platform, but they've now shifted to Blackboard because they used to have problems, especially when they were assessing some of the uh, courses. So they came up with, uh, they were doing like more I would say or online learning than others. They had collection of assignments on OU platform. They had all their course materials posted on Moodle and they had digital material development and delivery. They were doing some learner analytics and they were monitoring and evaluating for online survey feedback by the students. So that was for us at that point in time, like a most advanced uh, I would say online learning uh, in terms of higher education institution in Mauritius. Right, so Ephraim talked to you about Pebble and I believe Kenyatta, yes, was involved uh, in the Pebble project. Uh, so in 2018, when I was at the Commonwealth of Learning, we did a Pebble East Africa project where we develop around 30 online ODL and OER courses. And we trained a number of universities from four countries, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, and I can't remember the last one. And we work with around 25 universities to develop uh, online learning. And, and, and that worked really well. That was like two years before COVID. And I think it was very timely. And then of course, uh, being a project funded by Commonwealth of Learning and ACU, they proceeded with an evaluation report. And it's very interesting. The report is available on the web. You can have a look on it. And it uh, really talk about lessons learned. What was learned in terms of the Pebble East Africa project. And one of the important things is that there has to be a lot of a sustained training of trainers and, and people being trained in it, and that it has uh, to consider the individual context of each country. You can't just have, um, like, uh, very often we have this, uh, tendency to just import solutions from other countries, but we need to consider our own context. And that's very good that the ACD and uh, is uh, organizing this training workshop today, and uh, I think tomorrow as well. And uh, what, they, what they found was that the blended learning rubric and tools work very well. And of course, as always, be it electricity, connectivity, uh, internet remained a constraint and IT skills and access remain weak. 
Following the success of the Pebble East Africa project, we had the Pebble West Africa project, which was given to the Higher Education Commission for me to drive over two countries in Nigeria and Ghana. And we had 11 participating universities, as you can see here. And of course, when we were doing that project, we were also involving uh, the national commissions. And now having the hat, wearing the hat of the uh, commissioner of the Higher Education Commission, I would say this was a very smart and intelligent approach to be always working with commissions, universities to work with commissions. And one we found uh, is that we have developed a number of blended learning. We have trained the uh, universities, we have developed a number of quality assurance uh, of blended courses. And what they have reported in terms of strength that the teaching approach has changed for better and that they have developed and adapted QA tools kits and rubrics and authentic assessment. They now, uh, some of them have a policy on blended learning and blended learning is the new normal. However, what they noticed as a gap was that this was very time consuming and also the academics had uh, other engagements so they really had to find time and, and therefore there needs to be incentives when we are asking academics to move to this blended approach. So uh, the rubric that was used was a rubric that we developed with my colleague, Dr. Paris at the um, Commonwealth of Learning, and it consisted of a number of categories. I've just uh, put one of the pages which related to content, and uh, we had qualifiers and we had feedback. And uh, also uh, I wanted to showcase this because this had uh, really the same kind of, uh, I would say, pedagogical approach as the ACD toolkit. Of course, the ACD toolkit is much more comprehensive and addresses many more categories. And again, here I have to acknowledge we had the help of, of Dr. Malanga uh, Ephraim, who really helped us to put in place a course on quality assurance for blended learning, which I'm pretty sure he must have exposed you to it um, earlier today. Uh, so what this rubric showed, and I wanted to take as an example the case study from Kenyatta University. At that point in time, we reviewed the course outcomes, the descriptive text and media, the contents, the quality and quality of contents. And we saw that uh, actually your university's digital school of virtual and open learning spearheaded the whole process. And from the use of the rubric, they gave us a good uh, feedback under free broad heading, strength areas for improvement and recommendations. So that, that was very, very helpful. In terms for the coming back to the HEC and the QA in Mauritius, we are now developing a regulatory framework for online providers. And uh, we are working on regulations. As you know, in any country, regulations take time to implement and to be adopted because it has to go to national assembly, it has to be approved by the ministry, etc. But we want really to regulate uh, the, the, how would I say, the online providers who would eventually be coming to Mauritius to provide uh, online education. We don't want to have like a number of private online providers that do come and then have all kinds of certifications and, and, and degrees. So we are working closely with our sister organization, the Quality Assurance Authority, where we are establishing the rules how to establish an online, how to register, how to accredit, and how to recognize the qualification when it's done. And uh, this is an example of the standards which have just been developed last year, I think, by the Quality Assurance Authority. They've developed a set of guidelines on how to guide HECs, HEIs for quality assurance for open and distance and online and blended learning. And this is available on the web, and this is the way forward for the QAA. As for the HEC, what we are currently doing, we're reviewing the regulatory framework for accreditation of online courses. We have new standards for accreditation of ODL programs, and we are accrediting, of course, programs from public and private. We've started getting blended programs 
We are also developing that what would be interesting is a national credit value transfer system where we are going to assign micro credentials and we are also going to look into credits associated for online degrees or online courses within a degree so that these can be recognized and of course we also are working on qualifications for recognition because we are the apex body in Mauritius that assesses recognition and equivalence of qualifications. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I know I've been very quick, but I just wanted to provide an overview at what the commission is doing in terms of ODL and open and, uh, and quality assurance in open and distance learning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof Mohi. There's uh, quite a lot that she talked about, touching on some of the aspects that we discussed briefly in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be very useful, Prof Mohi, if we get your slides and then we yes. can be able to reflect more on them. Yes, May yes. I'll just, uh, yeah. I, I, I'll just uh, have a few probably amendments and then I'll send it to you. No problem. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah. Before I open the floor for questions and comments on the last two presentations, can I just check if uh, Prof Kuria from Kenya is available? Is he going to talk? Otherwise, we can go on to the question and commenting session. Okay. So let's have uh, questions and comments to the last two presentations. Well, I see there are so many hands up here. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate the last two speakers and uh, why the person from Ghana was speaking. There were some issues that were really ringing on my head. And I was thinking, how are we going to tackle this? And I believe that uh, the, uh, the, the toolkit we are doing will be able to address that. But when Professor Romelia spoke, it whets my appetite. And what is it? I picked this. And that was what was ringing in my mind. Does one size fit all? I want to say no. Because if we are looking at order today, and we break order, we have open, you have distance, you have e-learning. And we know so well that technology has come to disrupt open and distance learning. And with technology, even what we are calling some schools blended today, I'm seeing very near future that all universities will go blended. Because even during the COVID, this was already happening. And if that is it, then we need to redefine the focus for open. In my country, okay, my regulator is here because I was looking around for you. In my country, we are having 17 universities that are already given opportunity to run distance learning. What about the openness? Are you going to use the same instrument? No. Because when you come to assets, all of them are actually addressing assets, but the assets is not coming the same way. I would like the toolkit to take note of this. Again, when you look at the e-learning, I love what Professor Rebellia mentioned, emergency uh, remote. And that was what happened during the COVID section. And that again posed problem of quality in our educational system. Today, many of the universities the series, they are doing blended. They do mere instructional video or 
they go into video conferencing. Can we classify that as e-learning? I was discussing with a colleague from Kenya during the tea break. And we we're asking, that is not e-learning. So this call for action and attention in our QA toolkit. Again, we're looking at the mode of delivery. In the mode of delivery, the first thing that you take cognizance of is the content. How is this content structured? And most of the practices we have around today, the content is played down. And I would like the two kids to take cognizance of that. How do you design it? How do you present it? Assessment, different from what it used to be because there is disruption. Like I said earlier on, because I don't want to take much time. Very soon, I'm seeing all universities going blended, and which is being encouraged in a way. And if that is it, we must have it too. So I want to say ACDE, you are here to solve the problem for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure we will do that. <laughs> there was another hand just behind it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me first and foremost commend all the speakers. Uh, we sincerely appreciate their presentations. Uh, I have a small comment uh, on the presentation made by the director from Ghana. Uh, it has been observed, or let me start uh, saying that as part of what he presented, he made mention of the issue of satellite campuses established by some foreign universities in Ghana. Uh, I want to, or I would like to draw his attention that they should keep an eye on such satellite campuses because some of the activities they conduct uh, they seem not to be complying with the standard. Because uh, from observations, some of these graduates, when they graduate, and especially when they come back to Nigeria, for instance, they are being subjected to a kind of exam, post-graduation exam. And many of such students don't seem to be doing well in that examination. So there is need for the Ghana uh, Quality Assurance, uh, what do you call it, commission, to put in place strategies that will be able to at least checkmate such type of uh, institutions that establish uh, satellite campuses in Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so that's a comment. Any anybody else? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate the presenters. But by and large, my question goes to my brother from Ghana. And that question is: how did you manage the issue of parity esteem? between that of the ODS students and the face-to-face -face students. Number two, when you talk about the staff qualifications, what is the benchmark qualifications Ghana have in place for the quality of staff engaged in ODL institutions? And finally, number three, what are the programs put in place by the Ghana Higher Education Commission to assist in the training of staff with respect to ODL? In my own institution, the University of Lagos, I just want to corroborate what my sisters have said the other time, that most of this, most of our higher institution of learning now will be turning to using, I mean, be approaching blended approach. Because in the University of Lagos now, we have a policy in place which stated that 
any classes you have, there is a general course. You have almost, it cut across all the departments, should go online. But the question I want to ask, which is going to the three presenters is, what are the qualities we are putting in place to benchmark the way we are delivering these courses? Thank you. Thank you very much. And you would like to, to take one of your comments or questions. Please do. So thank you very much. And uh, starting from my colleague at the NUC on the issue of the blended uh, learning. I think it's something that uh, GTEC has really appreciated that. And <clears throat> that means that we have to look at our accreditation uh, processes and system again. I'm sure institutions are fatigued when it comes to uh, submitting a whole lot of documents for accreditation. So I am of, of the opinion that we may need to also have a dual accreditation so that once we accredit the institution for uh, a particular program, if it has its counterpart in the online, it should be considered also at that level. So that is what I'm thinking that instead of going for uh, one accreditation, then at that time for a, a, a branded one, will become too much of a work for an institution. Is there not any way that we can uh, have that dual accreditation so that you apply for this uh, institutional accreditation for the program and then at the same time for uh, the, the, the dual one? So that is what I'm thinking and I think, uh, my colleague professor is there and, and therefore we can uh, have a discussion on, on that because it's something that uh, is done on this. And in Ghana, we are thinking about having that thing uh, done. Then on the standard campuses, the policy of JTEC is that if you want to come and operate in Ghana, please come and establish in Ghana. Bring your physical facilities, if you are bringing staff, bring them and operate in Ghana. Then they go through the institutional and program accreditation. The challenges that we are getting, particularly with some of the uh, 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 satellite universities, is that you can't touch their curriculum. Why? Because they have developed the, that particular curriculum for a particular certification. And therefore, making an adjustment into it becomes a problem. So if you are running, a program in Ghana here, which certification is going to be awarded by another institution and in maybe in, uh, in UK, they have the uh, uh, program or the curriculum and therefore making adjustment or review becomes uh, an issue. But we go through the normal uh, accreditation processes and then we forward uh, our comments to the mental institution to take note. I'm surprised my colleague from Nigeria asked me a question because yesterday we, we struggled, actually struggled together. We came around, as I'm standing here, I'm even dosing. So I'm surprised you managed to ask me a question. We were the only two people left and we can count the number of challenges that we went through uh, yesterday. So maybe I will not answer his question. But uh, I think your quality of esteem and then the quality assurance is what these two kids is trying to address. And that is why all of us need to, you know, incorporate it or adopt it and try to, to see how we can improve upon our, uh, 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 the quality assurance of our uh, ODLs. So thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Um, I'm informed that uh, there are people who are online who also want to participate in the discussion. I don't know if there's uh, still a hand up from those who are online. Do, is there anyone with a hand up? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you very clearly. Go ahead. 
Thank you very much. My name is Oyekunle Adebuega from National Open University of Nigeria, Abuja. I want to appreciate SDD for giving us this opportunity and also appreciate all the presenters so far. I have listened to these presentations and I begin to wonder, given what was presented by my regulator from NUC in Nigeria here, and the, the director from Ghana, and the, the top presenter, I was thinking that we should be looking at quality assurance beyond regulation by these agencies. That is, uh, whether you see in Nigeria and in other countries. By that, I mean that we should also be considering a form of quality assurance in uh, uh, the outputs, just as mentioned by one of the presenters. And in this case, I am looking at the feedback that we can get from the students themselves or the learners, such that will make us to look inward, one, on the, on the materials that is being provided for them, for, that is the study material, two, on the facilitation, and as well, the, the, the instructors themselves, because that one has a good degree does not necessarily mean that you can actually dispense this knowledge to the students. Uh, uh, so I, I'm looking at a way by which we can begin to look at getting feedback from the students in such a way that will help us to look inward on our quality assurance uh, uh, exercise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to assume that um, student feedback is one of the key components of our quality assurance frameworks. And that, and that um, we always find a way of getting feedback from students, feedback on various aspects of delivery, on the materials they use, on the support the institution provides generally. Okay, he, he also has an additional comment. So thank you very much for uh, your question. I think the, the point is that it is very, very difficult to really go beyond the quality assurance without looking at the regulators. The point is that we need to uh, build a very robust internal quality assurance system in place. That is where we should be taking off. Assuring quality or assuring internal quality is the sole responsibility of the institution. And when things are done well, I can tell you, the regulators didn't have much to do. They only come and have conversations and discussions with you aimed towards improvement. So I'm thinking that because uh, the student aspect Student engagement policy is one of the things that, one of the policies that we, we uh, required or request when uh, institutions are applying for accreditation, whether normal, regular accreditation or, or the distance one. But we should be thinking of putting in place systems, structures, policies, and processes that really guarantee the quality of our distance learning programs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things that we wanted to happen in this workshop is to get um, the views of um, quality assurance agencies on the aspect of uh, collaboration and cooperation amongst at least ACDE member institutions on quality assurance. And, and within that, we, we think that it may be a good idea if the ACDE introduces an ACDE certification program where institutions will be accredited by ACDE accreditors and they will be given an ACDE certificate. So we wanted to hear your views on that. It's, it's, it, it's very much linked to the benchmarking aspect that has been raised because the more cooperation, the more collaboration we have, 
in quality assurance, the more we are likely to benchmark our, our performance. So what do you think about this collaboration and uh, cooperation and ACDE certification? Would it be a good idea? Would you welcome it? Just, just open it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ephraim, can I can I just uh, intervene because I'll have to leave? Yes, please. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I mean, um, I'm just uh, uh, putting this idea on the table, coming from an external person to this whole group, but I already feel part of you. I think that's a very good idea. What. Dr. Ephraim is, is proposing, but of course you will have to work the modalities and see how uh, practically this can be this can be put in place quite, uh, I would say, rapidly. And especially with all these concepts to be able to develop like a community of practice based on your sharing of all these lessons and uh, case studies that you're doing. This is what I just wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Mela, and thank you also for making an input at this workshop. Thank you. Yeah. I I think partnership and collaboration is the order of the day now, and there's nothing wrong for our uh, ACD and the uh, regulators coming together to you know promote this nice idea. My thinking is that maybe we may need to do what I will call dual uh, certification because legally we have institutions that have been established by government to regulate or oversee uh, proper management of higher education in each uh, respective uh, countries. And going certification alone by ACD may at times may pose a challenge. So even in the composition of the panel that visit institution, there can be also a form of partnership where uh, the national regulators will constitute panels to comprise uh, members of the ACD because of the technical inputs they have uh, or to, 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 to provide uh, to the assessment uh, process. So I think partnership and collaboration is something that is welcoming. Thank you. Thank you very much for the privilege of speaking last. I think you have exhausted all the responses. Yes, is a collaboration desirable or not? I think the answer is, Yes, and that, uh, as I mentioned in my submission, that we need to uh, expand the collaboration within uh, regulatory, you know, between regulatory agencies and then within the, uh, even the participating higher education uh, institutions. And I agree totally that uh, uh, this is a business of uh, mutual recognition. You know, uh, we have to look at the mutuality, the issues of mutuality, the issue of uh, complementarity. And there is also the element of external recognition. And therefore, uh, I think the dual certification uh, will just be fit for purpose. Uh, because if you, it's like looking at the branch and uh, excluding the, 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 the roots. So if you want to be seen to be properly uh, accredited or recognized or validated, uh, I think we need that convergence of uh, both the host institution and the ACD to give it that uh, that uh, proper perspective and the real essence of what a certification process uh, should be. But yes, uh, at the end of uh, every uh, you know participation, it will be good. Uh, in fact, when the the, the the president president goski was speaking this morning and the mayor mentioned that everybody here will be certificated at the end of the workshop you know i could see that that enthusiasm you know that so i think uh this is the way to go but in a in a in a you know in a dual uh mode uh system okay 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm so glad that uh, in principle, the idea is accepted. But I think what we would need to do then is to lay the ACDE to liaise with national agencies and work out the actual modalities for doing it. Yeah. Um, there are two hands up, you know, can come in and then and then postulate. You want to say Mike? Thank you. My name is Victor Binda from Masinda Malaria University. Uh, I was expecting some two solutions that was raised by my friend here. The standards at which the commissions are weighing the staff, which has not been covered very well. But I also want to weigh in and contribute some few things in terms of the process of teaching and learning, where in the ODEL, uh, I'm a lecturer, I'm also uh, a facilitator for ODEL over several years. Uh, for several years, this has been uh, a, a car driven without a dashboard. And I'm happy in the recent past, I'm lucky that I, I got some information from the West before I came and I was able to coordinate some few issues. But uh, before COVID, we had some few issues that were actually underlying, especially for distant learning. One of the things is acceptability. People were so resistant to take this, especially our teaching counterparts. Because of the labor involved in the initial side, time, then the process of uh, of, of teaching, especially giving feedback, because online depends on feedback, constant feedback, so that the learner can be able to understand where they are going. I'm so lucky, or we are so lucky that at a certain point, we had some instructions and training on how to design, facilitate, and do innovative um, assessment. And uh, through that, we actually, we have some guidelines on the same. I don't know, have not interacted with the toolkit to be able to show and have the directions, especially now the teacher is here, the student is here, the policy is in the office. So what is the process going on? And how can we be able to monitor this? This is, I think, uh, having that, I think we can, the, the circuit can be complete. And now we can now see the outcome as one of the, People online said, what is the quality of the outcome? The process can be good, but the end product is fake. So the whole process is flawed. I've been told that uh, teaching starts from assessment. For you to design a course, you need to know when, what are you going to assess? And I was told when we are being taught, immediately a student gets into a class, they look for past papers. Why? because the quality of what they have learned is in the examination. And therefore, when you're designing a course, before you facilitate, you need to know what are you, how are you going to assess, what you are going to assess. This will inform your design and facilitation process. Thank you. Thank you very much. An important point indeed. So what is reminding us is that we are looking at these standards our stand, we must make sure that our standards also speak to the outputs of our institutions. And, and this is probably part of the reason why we are taking employability very seriously in terms of integrating it in our quality assurance frameworks, including these standards. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate our creditors that are here for agreeing for this uh, dual certification. I just want to make uh, a recommendation on how it might work. The way I want to suggest is that 
the ACD accreditation should help to improve on the institutional QE. And because in the internal quality assurance, if it is strong and powerful, like the, our colleague from Ghana, they say, those that are coming for the accreditation, it will be easy. Let it be a requirement for the accreditors that if you have not had a certification from the ACD body, then you are not qualified to even apply for the accreditation. You are not qualified at the national accreditation body because that will equally help to solve the challenges we have at institutional level buy-in. Because when we speak this way, it looks very easy. But when it comes to uh, the application of it, implementation at the institutional level, to have a buy-in of even your colleagues is difficult to get it done. That is just what I want to suggest so that it will be a dual certification. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Prof. Kiraro, just next to her. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon again. <clears throat> now, I think I also want to raise an issue. I don't know whether the toolkit takes care of this. I've been trying to go through, but I don't seem to see the toolkit addressing this one. <clears throat> well, uh, not many of us have interacted with the toolkit that much. Now, with this online teaching, and learning, there is now a, a, a push from the learners especially for online exams, mm. online assessment. I don't seem to see it being addressed because that is now the push. <clears throat> Our students are pushing us a lot. So far, they have to have sitting exams. Maybe assessments can be sent online. Now, what are we gonna do? Because I think I saw not too long ago, something from uh, two universities in Australia, and I think one or two in Europe, they are reverting to the, this assessment I'm talking about. With the, what we had in the morning, chat, GPT. Mm. Mm. How can we have our exam, I mean, assessment improved and the quality maintained? Uh, for some time now, I've had a push from one of the farms in South Africa, in actually Johannesburg, pushing us. We are here. We can assist you in proctoring, you no know, online exams. Then recently, another one from Holland. There was a time there was also getting, you know, that kind of push from a, a company in America. What do we do about this? Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. So there's a lot to think about as we work on this toolkit. All these things have to be somehow brought in. So yes, I, I do think that we can no longer afford to shy away from online assessment. We've gone the online learning route and we will just have to embrace online assessment as well, but it has to be credible assessment. I think that's where the challenge is. So we need to have standards on that. Okay, colleagues, unless there are any more burning questions, I would want to bring that this session to an end. Thank you very much for the lively discussion. Thank you very much to our national agency representatives for such a sterling job. And for the insightful presentations, please send us your slides so that we can share them with the rest of the participants. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you so much um, for the presentations that were made this afternoon and for our regulators. Uh, thank you so much. We have one more session. Um, for those who have used the toolkit, we are going to give us feedback and I want to invite lead on this. Thank you. Welcome, Prof. Thanks for your um, for hanging in there. Um, this is the last um, uh, session for the day. Um, I think we have um, one institution online. I do not know if um, there are any others in the room that would like to share um, some feedback if they have used um, your institution has used the toolkit um, before uh, for self-assessment or reviews or anything of such. Um, we had about three institutions, but um, one of them could not make it. And the second institution um, will, was not, um, did not have um, um, a report for us. So I, we are going to throw it open. There's one institution online that is going to be sharing. Um, but may I know if there's any institution being represented here that has used, maybe the first question should be, how many institutions here have used the toolkit before? Okay, that's, um, which institution, sir? UNICEF. Oh, UNICEF, yeah. yes. Okay, so you would like to share? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's good. <laughs> so any other institution? So because what we are trying to do, as you know, um, all of these issues that are coming to the fore are going to be um, issues that will inform, you know, standards that are going to be added um, to the toolkit as it is. And then your experience using the toolkit, um, if there were gaps, if there were whatever the positives were, whatever the gaps were, it will be good for us. We shared some guiding questions, um, but please feel free to share you know, since you're sharing extempore, you know, what, um, you know, what was the takeaways for you uh, from that experience. But before we come to you in the room, um, I would like to invite um, from um, Ladoke. This is a, a non-ACD um, member, a non-ACD institution. And um, um, I'll just give a little bit of background. Um, are they in the Room, Professor Arulogu. Yes, we are. Uh, and Professor Ujo. Yes, I'm around. Yeah. Okay, I'm thank around. you very much for joining. I can see Professor Arulogu. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for your patience. We are about uh, uh, over an hour behind schedule, but thank you for staying online. But um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. Uh, Ladoke Akitola University of Technology is, in, is uh, situated in Nigeria, and um, they attended the uh, one of the workshops that um, Retrieval, that is the institute um, um, I had, um, we had on QA in 2021. And at that workshop, we evaluated three, three toolkits stroke guidelines. And the, um, the ACD one was one of them. Um, and we also had the rubric on blended learning that uh, Professor Mohi talked about. That was also one of them. And then the NEC guidelines. And then um, we encouraged everyone at the end of the day to go, um, you know, take one, utilize whichever one that they felt, you know, they found useful and then, um, you know, share a report with us. And Lautech, was one of the ones, the, the institutions that did that. And um, so we are glad to welcome them in our midst. And uh, we're looking forward to them becoming a member, an ACD member by virtue of this. Um, so Professor Arulogun um, is the director of the Distance Learning Center. It's a dual mode institution. So I would like to invite him um, to share their experience. Um, or to be sharing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Joe? Okay. Yes, Professor, Professor Joe. Joe. Take, uh, 
Okay, okay. thank you very much. You are welcome, Professor Jim. Thank you, Ma. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for the privilege to participate. I'll be sharing on um, LaTeX experience. Like uh, Prof rightly said, I was proportioned to be one of the participants at the workshop. And so I uh, had to be the team when there was a need for uh, institutional review of uh, uh, open distance learning. Can you see my slides, please? Yes. yes. Good, okay, so uh, so this is the outline. I'm going to present very briefly. So um, how we approach the available toolkits, how we went about the exercise, and then how we highlight the strengths, the weaknesses, and uh, a few suggestions I have. So how did it come about it? Like the background has been provided. Um, sometimes early last year, I think Professor Ulubo has been on this with the Vice Chancellor of the University, but, uh, but January last year, 2021, he, oh, January 2021, yeah, I think, is it 2021 or 2022? Now he, he eventually got a nod and the Vice Chancellor uh, gave the quality assurance unit of the, uh, of the university to go ahead to do institutional review of our uh, open distance learning program. LaTeX has a lot of, uh, LaTeX has been doing well in open distance learning for quite some time right now. So the call from the director of ODL, Professor Arulogu actually initiated this. And when this call came, uh, we had a pretty new director of uh, quality assurance uh, unit but I have been a foundation member of the unit since it started uh, about uh, six years uh, ago. So, and by Providence also, I was at the workshop of uh, the retreat, organized by retreat and now. So I had to lead the team. So we came together and then selected a team. Okay, and when we selected a team of uh, academics and uh, university administrators who is going to partake in this exercise. The team, I think we are about 30 because we wanted to do a very comprehensive work. We decided on the choice of two kids to, to adopt. Uh, we went through the university commission, university, national university commission toolkit, but which we saw that it's just like, a, it's like a replica of the, uh, what uh, is being used for the normal, you know, uh, delivery and not necessary. So it was just like an ad adaptation from the usual, uh, the normal classroom delivery. Then we have the common way of learning with truth also, which we were able to, which I got from uh, the training from the workshop and also the SED uh, QAAA. So, um, how did we go about it? We, okay, uh, this is the background I provided earlier on. I attended the workshop for teams to 16 December 2021. The assignment came up January 2022. So we composed the team and then we picked um, season academics, especially in Professor Akeda, who are also um, having some trainings, you know, from relevant departments, let me put it that way, because we have about five programs running uh, uh, ODL at that time, I think. And then uh, a few top university administrative, administrative staff. Okay, we are also there, deputy registrars and things like that. And then we held a briefing, 19th January 2022. Uh, that's 2022. So we had a briefing, we had to update and we had to do a, a brief training and go over the uh, rubrics, how uh, to explain, how uh, to describe, how uh, to make them understand. And then we need to make a choice of the exact two kits and the criteria we are going to use. As a matter of fact, what happened is uh, we actually used more criteria than contained in the ACDE, but I want to say that we adopted all the criteria in the ACDE. Okay, because uh, it actually provided more of the things we needed there. Okay, so um, this this is like um, 
uh, a table I, you know, you know, made to for the comparison of the three, the ACD, the NUC, and the Commonwealth of Learning. Okay, we can see areas where they have things in common. Under ICD, we have vision, mission, planning, which also taken care of by the um, NUC under philosophy and objectives. But actually, the rubric for Commonwealth of Learning that we have, I think, is more for program. Uh, you know. Um, accreditation or something like that. Okay, so it's not really constitutional review. So uh, probably that's why some of those things are, aren't available in the uh, rubric are available to us. Then the organization, organization. So what I'm, what this table actually shows is that there are some agreements. Okay, amongst these uh, rubrics are available, but. We, we saw that uh, ACD contains so much of the things we do there. And then uh, the 11 are there. We adopted all the 11 uh, criteria standard under the ACD and introduced a 12th one. Okay. And those were the ones we used for the uh, uh, institutional review exercise, which took, took us two days. Okay, so these are the ones we used. The last we introduced was conduct of examination. And I can, uh, I can see that some of the participants are already talking about uh, how exams uh, are to be conducted and things like that. So just to let you know that it's also one of the uh, concerns of the team that performed this institutional review. And so we looked at and we assessed the way exams are being conducted. Uh, if it is it online, do we have measures for proctoring? And uh, some of that stuff, so everything was put uh, together. So this is where the uh, criteria, these are the standards we use to assess. Okay, uh, let me do a little bit of uh, comparison, uh, comparing the toolkits. Okay, on, under the metrics, uh, okay, I've categorized them into four. So this table is mine, categorized them into four. Um, ACD uses some forms of measures, and then uh, it's, uh, it's the metrics are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it, from uh, 0 means fails to meet the criteria, uh, satisfactory is 1, uh, 2 is marginal, 3 is good, 4 is excellent, and things like that. Common way of learning use qualifiers, which is a bit more subjective, that, uh, like uh, Okay, partially met, fully met, did not meet or not available at all. While NUC uses um, um, weights, okay, you have to score, okay, and there is percentage for everything. So, um, in that wise, okay, we considered that SED uh, gave us more uh, ability to be more uh, specific in the in the terms of assessment. We'll be able to pick which one at the end of the day. And it's not as if we're actually putting up a ranking at the end of the day. If we are to use a ranking, we are going to see that later it might not be very, very uh, uh, useful for that. Then again, I under those four, uh, okay, in considering the three, we also have evidences. Uh, well, SED also requests for a lot of evidence for anything you claim you see or anything you claim you have. So this is requested, that document is requested, minutes are requested, as a matter of fact, videos, uh, recordings of meetings are requested and things like that. And I want to let you know that uh, up to that point, it's not all the institutions, including Lautech, that has all those factors, you know, prepared, okay, for common way of learning, of course, some evidences are also requested. Uh, for NUC, okay, like I said, since it was just an adaptation from the regular program stuff, it, that was not uh, such request from the rubrics available, then feedback, okay, at the end of the day, okay, uh, for each assessment, um, there is a sort of feedback which is expected, okay, uh, from each of the uh, assessments you, uh, you, you do, okay? What's your feedback? Uh, what is your comment on these? So comments and feedback are available both on Commonwealth uh, of Learning, AUC and uh, ACD. For the three of them, they ask the comment section. 
uh, for AUC, there is no feedback, uh, you know, session, like I said. And then um, the fourth uh, condition, excuse me, the fourth condition is also about summary at the end of the um, of each of these standards that you have used, are you able to summarize? How do you summarize everything and things like that? So, so what are the strengths? Uh, uh, we're able to, well, I was able to put this together as uh, the strengths we identified at that time, the criteria standards are where I liked it. Oh, wow, the ACP uh, rubric is so, so well detailed, fine. Uh, the criteria and standards are well lighted. They are into groupings. The questions are, are well crafted and things like that. Like the, they are referred as performance indicators. They are well crafted, clearly stated. And then uh, I can say that they are detailed and explicit. Also, for each of those questions or for performance indicators, there is demand for sources of evidences. And then, like I said, <laughs> Uh, aside that you, are, you claim that you have this, you still need to provide a source of evidence that it truly exists. So, um, so for all the performance indicators, sources of evidence, most, let me put it that way, uh, sources of evidence is uh, actually required. And then the rated assessment, like I said, it uses some measures uh, from zero to four. And then uh, sectional summary. So after each section, you know, I mentioned we used 12 of them. So after each session, after on the vision, mission, and planning, we, okay, you still have to now give a summary of your assessment of that session. You need to talk about the strengths, identify areas of improvement, recommendations, and overall evaluation for the whole session. So what, this is what we did. We divided ourselves into uh, about six groups, Okay, so we now uh, assigned two of these um, sections, okay, this criteria and the uh, criteria standard to each of the groups to go and undertake. So at, at the end, each of the groups now gave a report, okay, of their findings. And then, of course, so that we're able to do a thorough job, uh, it was a really, really a thorough job that was done and we found ACD very, very helpful. That's how we adopted it. So uh, all are the weaknesses? Well, I want to say there are too many rubrics. Wow, it's a very enormous task, sincerely. You've got to go through each one if you want to do a thorough job and you have to search for, you have to request for um, sources of evidence, sites there, and things like that before you actually even come up to uh, your assessment or maybe the score you want to give there. Another thing, another weakness is that there are overlap of indicators, like I said. So after, uh, under a particular criteria standard, okay, you discover the by time you are treating another criteria standard, the same, uh, there are similar questions asked and then the same sources of evidence so now we distribute ourselves into groups. So a group would need this as a, 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 as a proof, and some other group we also need the same thing as a source of uh, a group. So as a, as a source of evidence. So as a matter of fact, uh, there are a lot of overlaps. Okay, probably because we divide ourselves into groups, so that made it too, so so glaring. So we could see that okay. Oh, but this group also already already asked for this. Oh, that group also is already using that particular you know file or document and things like that. So a lot of indicators, and then this needs to be actually you know streamlined so that uh, there won't be too much. Uh, uh, you know, duplicity there. So there are too many comments demanded. You've got to make comments about every performance indicator. You have to write a comment. After you, you've scored the, uh, after you've scored, you have to write what's your comment and then you discover that in, 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 on every page, you have so many comments to write at the end of the session, you, have, you write another comment. Wow. So much comments to write. Sometimes under a particular criteria standard, you may have to write up to 30 comments. Well, it's good. 
to be thorough, but uh, sometimes it could be cumbersome. Okay. Then uh, that's about the toolkit, but about the institution, uh, uh, the potential challenge with requests or demand for classified documents. There are some documents that the institution may uh, consider classified, and then uh, they may not be willing to provide. Despite that, it was an institutional review. Uh, there are, uh, you know, documents like the budget, okay, and probably accounting records and things like that. And the bursary units under the ODF is that probably we lack the, you know, uh, the, you know, the authority to request for such things and things like that. And probably the university also may not even want to make such things available in the public space. Okay, so uh, that's that's just um, the, the potential areas where that can be challenges. Institutions may not be willing to make some things available in the open, especially when it's going to be available to outsiders. So, well, a few suggestions I have is that the criteria standards should be streamlined if possible, and then uh, so that uh, we avoid the overlap of uh, their repetition and duplicity that is in the uh, rubric. And then uh, the demands for classified documents to be substituted, or if possible, uh, ways or better ways they can be requested for that we not look at see, okay, uh, for example, now some of evidence, you need to cite this, you need to ask for this. Well, probably there are other ways that the uh, open distance learning uh, units would keep down documents without actually uh, booking too much into official or uh, documents of the institution that they may not be willing to or supply. So in summary, the ACD QA toolkit is well taught, well designed, and well crafted. Okay, however, it's a bit cumbersome or enormous and it contains uh, much duplicity. So uh, anyways, I want to say it's still the best bet available for a thorough job. And then we used it and it's really served as well. So, Thank you so much for your time. I hope I've been able to make a little contribution to this course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, Professor Joe, for a very concise uh, presentation. Um, I think I will probably will probably take um, the two institutions and then we can have you know a brief discussion after that. So may I call upon um, representative from UNICEF to please share. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first thing, uh, I apologize for my English. It's very poor, but I'll try to do my best to understand me. Uh, if you are speaking Portuguese, no one can understand. Maybe two guys can help me out. Yes. Um, first thing, uh, I can introduce my institution. Unis said is a new university in Mozambique. Before it was one an institute of distant education online was the, was established in, in 2014 and they start to deliver um, on to 2015. Uh, we started with uh, about uh, 2,400 students and now we are 30,000. Uh, <clears throat> The Quality Assurance uh, Unity was established in 2017 as first time in our institution. And I was the one, I was the first one who worked on this uh, unity. Uh, after we established that uh, unity, we were not known anything about quality assurance. Uh, to let us know what is the quality assurance, you need to set, uh, uh, did a workshop 
uh, not all for UNICEF and they ask other institution in Mozambique, uh, like UCM. And then we invited ACDE uh, leader of quality assurance. At that time we, we received uh, Dr. Ephraim to come and teach us how to deal with the quality assurance. It was in 2018. I think so. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing, the first challenge which you had to, to understand the quality assurance is was the language. Uh, he came, he was speaking in English, but we have understand it in Portuguese. <laughs> uh, it was first challenge. After that, we, we received the toolkits and to understand the, the toolkits, we had to translate it. But to translate, we didn't give any translator. We ourselves, because we know what we are looking for, we tried to translate it to understand well. We did it inside. Uh, then of the team of quality assurance understand uh, about the, the toolkits, we did our internal job to deliver this, what we, 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 we receive it as a knowledge to our boards. Because, you know, the vice chancellors at that time, directors, they didn't want to hear about quality assurance. We start to, to take them to, to the group. Is that the challenge which we had? <laughs> Next question. Um, the other challenge which we have is to understand and to find the right evidence to, to understand very well how can we implement the toolkits. After we know about this, we proposed to our director at that time that I he said, or I said, you should uh, use the, quality, the toolkits for ACDE that is quite uh, applicable for distance education and uh, as like as as online education because uh, uh, our regulator or our agents there they were they have toolkits all for uh, face to face uh, delivery of technology and then our director, our board, uh, accept that. And then we start to use those still kit after translation. Uh, what do we find there is that uh, the number of criteria is normal numbers. We have 11 for institutional and nine for uh, programs and course. But when you go for uh, performance indicators, uh, there is a lot of challenge. A lot of number of, of uh, performance indicators. And uh, what we see there, that uh, there was repetitive uh, 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 issues. And then this make, um, how can I say, the, the, for our assessment, it was, it was not so easy to implement. And then people were calling us, what, why would you have to answer three or five times the same, same question? Yeah, to explain this is not so easy. And then, and, and then, you know, as we are online, we did we put those, those toolkit in at the platform to everyone to, 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 feel, to use it and feel it there. You see, to, to get a feedback uh, online too. Um, and then when uh, we wanted to upgrade our institution to university, we did uh, uh, three reports, two reports. And the first report before we, 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 we moved to university where we we submitted external uh, assessment. We invited 
Said by coincidence. The border asked Said, Said to make it external access through the first report which we have managed to do. And then that report was positive. And then we say, oh, maybe we are following the right way to implement the ACD uh, 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 toolkits. Uh, and then to, to, to upgrade our institute to university, uh, we submitted two reports. Uh, I can say the first report was that we did ourselves, and the second was external, did by uh, by Said, and the third one was our own. And then we had a lack to be to consider that this uh, this institution has condition to to upgrade its position. That's why now we are university since two thousand. 21. Uh, the challenge is that I have said there was a strangeness. There were, I can say, many things we'll find there. But uh, what I can say that the, our situation, uh, they say that they, 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 they are sure that always they will use the toolkits of ACD. That's why we came here or to confirm that we are the one who are using the ACD toolkit, but to, to ask ACD to think that uh, ACD is not only with the uh, English speakers and the French speakers. We have to remember us, there's a five country in Africa where they speak Portuguese. Maybe if we make um, uh, uh, the instruments or the kids, please, it's better to, to look for this. We are here, all three speak Portuguese, but everyone is speaking English. But we have to share our experience like this. Even that's why I came here. I came here to, to share my experience, but uh, if I was in, speaking in Portuguese, maybe I can speak. Speak more than an hour. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I finished. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's very nice. Thanks very much. Thank very, very Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, um, UNICEF. And um, we definitely, um, early on, I think in the life of developing the toolkits, we actually had the versions in mind. Yes. Um, yes, because we wanted to take care of Lusophone, uh, Francophone, and Anglophone. Um, we did have them in mind, but I think um, somewhere along the line, getting people to do the translations, it's fell between the cracks. But we've noted that um, for the review, that that definitely will be taken into consideration. Um, colleagues, I don't know if there are um, questions from the floor, but you've heard two um presentations. I hope Professor Joe is still online. Um, the guiding questions really around these were how um, did the, what did they use the toolkit for, whether it was institutional or program. Apparently the two institutions used it for institutional um, reviews. And then um, second question was, was what did they find useful? Um, you know, the criteria standards and then what did they not like about the criteria? So that I think they both they both have the same um, the, the same um, response about what they did not like, um, and then what aspects need to be improved upon or addressed. Um, so I I think um, except if I don't know if there are comments from the floor, but I think one thing that is clear um, looking at the um, for the two responses. Um, is the fact that, um, first of all, congratulations, Uni said that you got upgraded um, into a full university. Um, I think they deserve a round of applause. Congratulations. 
and um, um, we're and we're glad in ACD that um, we're part of making that happen. Even though you had to go, you know, through a very difficult um, process to do that using the toolkit. Um, Lautech, yes, you um, you alluded also to 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 this fact that there are a lot of overlaps. I think tomorrow we'll be looking at that as the toolkit is unpacked. Um, there were reasons for these overlaps, but perhaps they can be reduced. Um, we, we will be able to look at that. There were reasons definitely for the overlaps. And one reason I can tell you now right away is that the toolkit was designed in such a way that if you choose to take just one or two criteria standards, or maybe just even one under the institutional, you will still have all the program um, performance indicators that you require. But what has happened with both institutions is that they used all 11. So if you are using all 11, you are bound to get overlaps. But it was designed with that thought in mind that an institution might decide, okay, this is um, the technology age. And one of the things that um, institutions have been asked to do is to look, take a second look at their vision and mission and to see whether they can integrate, you know, this aspect of e-learning um, because of course you have to speak to your vision and mission. And if it's not there, then you want to look, look at that and recalibrate. So if such an institution says, okay, I want to, you know, develop, you know, um, my, I mean, to evaluate myself or to assess where I am in terms of e-learning, then they go to, they say, let me start with the vision and mission. So they just take that one criteria. Now, if we avoid the repetition, then there are some things, performance indicators that they will be missing because they're using just one criteria. Um, I suppose another way around this is to say, make references and say, go to this um, uh, C criterion um, uh, performance indicator, A, B, C, D, you know, if you are using just this, that's probably another way to do, to do a cross-referencing to avoid the repetition. But that was really the idea behind the, um, the duplication that you see there. But we will look at this as well. Um, I think um, we may be able to continue this conversation because what has happened today is all that we've received and the feedback and the um, discussion is is all um, going um, is all input and feedback to uh, for us to when we go into our groups tomorrow to have all this at the back of our minds and to be able to evaluate the criterion standards with that at the back of our minds. And I hope this has been very useful for us. I do not know if my colleagues want to say, um, Dr. Johannes. Um, Dr. Langa, I don't know if you have want to say anything about the presentations or our presenters, Professor Ojo. Okay, Ma, thank you very much. I actually wanted to add that aside from the institutional review, we also did the program review. Oh. Yes, we also did program review, and that's why we, had, we needed to go through everything. So we reviewed the five programs we were running at that time. It was wow. very good, also very useful. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you very much. Let's give Lautech a round of applause. And we're looking forward to you becoming an ACD member institution very soon. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate your sharing. And if you could share your slides with us, um, we would appreciate that as well. Thank you. Um, I think I would like to call on, yes, doc, the executive director, Dr. Woma. Oh, okay. Okay, can we take the hand online? It's not, uh, yes. Okay, was that Professor Arulogo? Okay, no, Professor Arulogo, yes, I was just clapping. So thank oh, you. Oh, you were clapping, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we were. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Planning to join the CD and uh, the outcome of of the UH, we have actually center and it's helping us. And some of my colleagues in the center are saying that uh, it's important that we maintain quality and use a better standard, which ACD 
and IQA provide for us. So I want to say thank you for that opportunity. Thank you very much. So thank, you so much. thank you very much. Thank you for joining us um, all the way from the UK. We appreciate your presence and for this presentation. Um, Dr. Teresa, can I hand over to you? Um, we This is the last session. I want to thank you colleagues again for, for your active participation and contributions. And I hope that you have found these um, sessions very useful. Um, tomorrow, the work starts. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Fulue. Can we give um, uh, Professor Fulue and the colleagues who have shared three factorial claps? You know how it goes? We don't know. <laughs> You know how it goes? Okay, it goes. Okay, and then you receive. Oh, our colleagues online, uh, we are clapping for you and 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 our colleague from UNICEF. Okay, and the moderator. So can we go? Very good. Thank you so much. I know it has been a long day, especially for colleagues who are alive this morning. I know you have struggled to be here. And I was hoping that the facilitators were to give me um, an opportunity to give a story. At some point, I was almost sleeping. Then I remembered I told Ephraim, I have a story. Whenever I feel like sleeping, I have a story to tell people so that we don't sleep. Now you know. Tomorrow? Good. Um, this brings us to the end of today's programs. And um, tomorrow we want to start a little bit early because now this is the time we are going to delve into the uh, standards. And we are going to critically look at, and it was good that our colleagues have shared what they saw in the, in the, in the, in the toolkit. So they have opened our eyes. We shared the toolkit to your emails or to your WhatsApp. And we believe you will create time to flip through and see which are these uh, standards we are talking about. So tomorrow we will start morning. And that means our van will bring our colleagues, as I mentioned in the morning, from Verona, 7.30. They will have picked you. Then they will come to um, Rainbow at 7.45, and I believe by 8, all of us, we will be here, and we will register for tomorrow, and then now we will be able to start. So, um, so I want to take this opportunity to wish you well. Take time, we have finished a bit early. Those of you who are coming to Kenyatta University for the first time, take time to walk around. It's a good environment, you know. So um, yesterday I had an opportunity to take uh, Prof and uh, Dorothy and uh, Juliet round. I believe now I inducted them. They are going to take you round. So create time and go round. Otherwise, thank you so much and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Sorry, there is tea outside. Let us go grab a cup of tea as we network. And then uh, we go for that walk, yeah? <laughs> also remember to complete the pre-workshop survey that has been sent to your emails, please. Thank you. My job is to make college easy. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. 